In this tutorial, I will show you how to create an SEO agency website step by step. And to create this website, you don't need any coding knowledge, design expertise or prior experience. Of course, in this tutorial, we'll create this fully professional SEO agency website together. But this tutorial isn't just limited to that. By following this tutorial, you can create any type of website by yourself. You can create a web design agency website, Facebook ads agency website, consulting business website, logo designer or graphic designer website, content writing services website, freelancers portfolio website, or any kind of business website. To create this website will be using all free resources a free theme the best and free page builder called Elementor and a few more awesome free plugins working with an Elementor is super fun you can create anything just by drag and drop I'll show you how to play with global colors so you can change any color with your brand color how to play with text and typography like a professional how to copy or duplicate any content from one page to another page to work more efficiently. I'll even provide you with all necessary images and templates so you can follow along with the video step by step. Most interestingly, we'll learn how to make any website 100% responsive for mobile and tablet devices. So there wouldn't be any technical boundary. Let's have a quick sneak peek at what we'll create in this video step by step. You will learn how to create a logo by using a free online tool, creating the header with navigation menu, how to make this awesome homepage with modern and trendy design, this animated banner area, client logos area, services area, a little sneak peek about you or your company, beautiful testimonial carousel, call to action area and a nicely crafted footer area i will show you everything from scratch i will show you how to create an amazing about page like this here you can feature your awesome team members how to create this services page here you can also showcase the case studies or portfolios for each service we'll have a dedicated single service page so that you can thoroughly describe that particular service then how to create a fully functional contact form inside your contact page also you can add this useful faq accordion finally i will show you how to write perfect blog posts with categories featured images and blog details within elementor people can also comment on your blog post can you believe we'll be doing all of this just by using a free page builder this tutorial is for complete beginners and by using Elementor Page Builder, we'll create everything just by drag and drop. Now let me introduce myself first. My name is Abir Hussain. Here in Jimfad Digital, we've created thousands of websites for our clients as a team. So basically, you're learning all the best methods and techniques from a real professional. I'm really excited. If you're excited like me, Please give this video a big thumbs up. This is the only thing I want from you. Other than that, this video is completely free for you. Just have a look. If you like this video, then from YouTube's left bar, you can go to liked videos and find this video easily later. All right, we will be creating our beautiful website in four easy steps. First, I will show you how to get your own domain name and web hosting. I will also provide you a 78% discount link. Then, how to install WordPress and afterwards, how to install a free theme and a free page builder. Finally, we'll start creating our amazing website step by step. Also, I'll be adding a timestamp in the description so you can always jump into the necessary part you need. Let's now start with step number one, which is to get your domain name and web hosting. So first of all, what is a domain name? Domain name is basically your website address like Facebook has Facebook.com, Amazon has Amazon.com, we have JimFileDigital.com. Similarly, for your website, you need an address that will be your website name Com. And what is web hosting? Web hosting is the storage space for your website. All the images, texts you will have in your website, all will be stored in your own web hosting, as you are owning your own web hosting, so there wouldn't be any limitation. You can run ads, you can upload any text or images, 
you can upload any theme or plugin you want, you are the in charge of your own website. Now, how to get your own web hosting with a free domain name? So first, just click on the very first link in the description below this video or you can go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash best host. So why Hostinger? In my opinion, Hostinger is the most affordable and also the fastest web hosting provider available. Just have a look into all their Trustpilot reviews. People are super happy with their hosting speed, affordable pricing and customer support. Now from here, you can change the language if you want. Maybe you speak Spanish or Portuguese or Hindi. You can select your language from here. So now let's just close this. One thing I also do want to say is that this page changes quite often. In fact, they probably change it once a month. So if the banner or interface looks different, don't worry, don't panic. This happens quite often. It's the same website. Now let's scroll down a bit and you'll find all the different plans here. By the way, here we can see three plans, but sometimes you may see four plans here. Just don't panic because you can create your own website with any of these plans. But as you're just starting out, I recommend taking this premium or business plan. With both of these plans, you can create up to 100 websites. For example, today you're creating a portfolio website, tomorrow you want to create a business website and next week you want to create an e-commerce website. So you don't need to purchase hosting each time, you can create all the websites within this same web hosting plan. So here with the premium plan, you'll get 100 GB storage. With the business plan, you'll get 200 GB storage. And with any of these plans, you'll get all features like this. Unlimited free SSL. So all of your websites would be encrypted and super secure. Unlimited bandwidth. So there wouldn't be any limit how many website visitors you'll have. Free email. You can create hundreds of professional email addresses like info at your website dot com or admin at your website.com like these. Then free domain. Yes, like I said, you'll get a domain name for free. You'll also get tons of WordPress features like one-click WordPress installation, free website migrations. So if you want to move your existing website from another hosting provider to Hostinger, they will transfer it on behalf of you. How cool is that? Now let's talk about security. Personally, I'm very serious about website security and Hostinger just nailed it with all these features like Cloudflare protected name servers, malware scanners and all these. I've had very bad experiences with other web hosting providers. We've got so many malware attacks and we had to pay the hosting providers additionally to use their other security tools. But here in Hostinger, you're getting all these security tools for free. Now, let's select a plan. And like I said, you can take any of these plans based on your needs. For now, I'm taking the premium plan. You can upgrade it later anytime. So click on add to cart. Alright, so here you're going to see different pricing options. Now this is referring to how long do you want to host with Hostinger. So we have 1 month, 12 months, 24 months and then we also have 48 months. First of all, I don't recommend going with one month because it's almost $12 a month, which is super expensive. We don't want that. My recommendation would be to go with 48 months. So for the first four years, you just need to pay $2.99 per month. That will save you $432. And then after those four years, you start to pay $7.99 per month, which is still super affordable for a web hosting plan that can hold up to 100 websites. But if you just want to start with two years or one year, you can click over here. And then in your first year, you just pay $3.19 per month. And you're still going to create up to 100 websites. And after that first year, you start to pay $9.99 per month. So the longer the first period, the more discount you will get when you renew your plan. So if you have the budget and you want to get the most discount possible, you can go for the 48 months. And after those 48 months, you start to pay around $7.99 per month instead of $9.99. But wait, there's more. If you scroll down over here, you see this have a coupon code button. And now if you click on it, 
Then if you fill in with my special coupon code, which is JFD10, and click on apply, you will now get a total of 78% discount. Now if we scroll up again and then select the one year plan and now scroll down, can you believe that you're almost getting the same amount of discount and we're also getting super fast web hosting with a free domain name for the full year only for $34. What an amazing deal, right? So scroll up again. Now you see pricing is only $2.87 per month for the first 12 months, $2.78 per month for the first 24 months and $2.69 per month for the first 48 months as we've added the JFD10 discount code. For now I will go for 12 months and then if we go here then put down your email address. Make sure to put your best email address because they will create your hosting account with this email address. Now let's put a very strong password here. Now if we scroll down, now you see you can pay using your credit card, PayPal, Google Pay or you can even pay using cryptocurrency. Also you may see more different local payment options based on your country. Now if we scroll down and here I'm just going to put my card information and then let's just click on submit secure payment. So from here you can just skip this part and then it's asking if we want to create or migrate a website and since we're not going to migrate any website we're just going to create one so let's just select create then click on next then from here make sure to select WordPress and then click on create with WordPress now here it's asking us to create login details for WordPress account so you already know what to do to create our WordPress account, we need to put down our email and since my email address is already here, I'm just going to put a strong password here. Now I'm done putting my password, so now let's just click on next. Now here it's asking us what type of website we want to build and according to the type of website you want to build, you can choose any type from here. If you're going to create a blog website, you can choose blog. If you're going to create an online business for your store, then you can select this one. Now, since the one we will be creating is for our agency portfolio, so I will be choosing this one. Then click on next. Okay, now let's just skip this one. Now here it's asking us if we want pre-selected plugins for our portfolio. So here let's just select this one. Because I want to select my plugins manually. Then let's click on next. Now since we're going to put our plugins manually, let's just skip this one. Now here it's asking what domain name do we want to use for our website. Let's write Abirtutes which is short for Abir Tutorials. Now as I'm done putting my domain name, you can see that it's suggesting us a lot of other domain names with extensions. Like here you can see abirtutes.in, abirtutes.me, abirtutes.com and more. From here you can choose any extension you like but I recommend you to choose the .com extension because it sounds more professional and legit. So I'm just gonna choose abirtudes.com, this one and then I'm just gonna click next. Now we need to fill up some details for my domain name. So here I'm selecting my country Bangladesh and then I'm selecting personal which is selected by default. Then click on the next step button. Now here I'm just quickly putting my details. Alright so here I'm done putting my information here. So now let's just scroll down and then click on finish registration button. So here it's asking us where is our portfolio target audience. And here you can just keep this default one which in my case they have selected a data center in the United States, Arizona. The closest one they have to my country but in your case it can be a different one. So you can just keep it to the default one or change it from here or you can also just change it later on. So now I'm just gonna keep it as it is and then click on the next button. Now it's installing WordPress so just wait a bit, no need to rush it. And as you can see our WordPress is being installed very quickly. It's almost done, we're pretty much there. And right now we're at the control panel of Hostinger. Here if we go into the home tab You'll see in the account actions, it's saying that they have sent a verification email to our Gmail account. So let's check our email. 
and in your inbox you'll find an email where it says verify your email address which is a verification email from the hostinger team so now from here we'll just simply click on verify email button here and then it will take you back to the hostinger control panel with the email address verified now from here i want to get my wordpress so from hosting and premium web hosting let's click on this manage button then it will take us to the hostinger dashboard then from here let's click on this wordpress overview and then if we scroll down we can see that it says wordpress admin panel so now if we click here it will take us to the wordpress dashboard so currently we're inside the wordpress admin panel or the wordpress dashboard and here i will make you guys familiar with all of these settings and options for example the posts media pages comments appearance plugins and all of these and even though all of these things are pretty simple and self-explanatory, I would still explain it to you so that you can have a better understanding so that you don't have to waste your time exploring all of these things on your own. And you can just start from the get-go. Now here we have our dashboard and as you can see that there are so many pop-ups here, which are here by default. But I don't want them here, since I like to work in a clean environment and having so many pop-up options can really distract you from finding something important and your overall work experience. So to clear all of this, you can just manually dismiss them like this or hide them by clicking on these drop-down buttons like this. Or you can just go to the top right corner and click on the screen options and uncheck them like this. Now as you can see, our dashboard is completely neat and clean. But now I would like to clean up my WordPress dashboard even more and to do that we're going to hover on this plugin option. Click on install plugins. Now as you can see that there are already some plugins installed by default. But to make our website we won't necessarily need these specific plugins that came by default. So what we're going to do now is select all of them from here go to the bulk actions options and click on deactivate then click on apply now that we're done deactivating them now we're going to select all of them again go to bulk actions and click on delete and then click on apply just like before now the browser pop-up is asking us if we're sure that we want to delete these plugins or not and since we're sure we're just going to click on the OK button there you go! All the default plugins were successfully deleted. For a much cleaner look, you can refresh the page again. Well, as you can see that there are no plugins here, so now we're completely done with the process of clearing out our default plugins. Now, you might be wondering, what is a plugin? Well, plugins are basically these extra apps or extra add-on-like things that extend or increase the functionality of your WordPress website. And of course, for our website, we will be using some plugins, but the ones that we deleted, we didn't really need them. And that's why we deleted them, so that now we can install only the plugins that we want to use and work with. Alright, now the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can change your password. And to do that, first of all, we're going to go to the Users option and then click on Profile. Here you can also change admin color schemes as well. Currently, it's given default, but you can change it to Light modern, blue, or whichever one you like. Now the main thing to understand here is that when you change these admin color schemes, the admin panel color changes as well. And that's basically what it does. But it doesn't really matter that much because the rest of the world won't be able to see it. Only we, the admins, can see it. So for now, I'm just going to keep it as default. And from here, you can even scroll down. And as you can see that you can also change the language of your site as well. You can give it to any other language, which one you like, or your native language. But for now, I'm just going to keep it as the default, which is English. Next up, you can see that you can set your name here, or you can change the already given name. So here, I'm just going to type my name. Then type my last name as well. You can change your nickname or set your nickname as well. Now this part is very important. You can choose whichever variation of your name you like from here. And now let's say if you write any blog post, the display name that you chose will be shown as the author's name on that blog post. So choose your display name wisely. I'm just going to choose Abir Hussain from here. Then if you want, you can change your email address from here. 
you can scroll down and change your WordPress profile picture from here by clicking here. And finally here, under account management, you can set your new password by clicking here. Now WordPress will suggest you a random strong password but you can set it to your liking and I'm gonna change it to something easy so that I can always remember it. So let's hide this and then set our new password. Now once you're done just scroll down and click on update profile. Now at this stage I'm gonna make you familiar with two basic terms. One is the back end or the dashboard of our website and another one is the front end of our website. Now what you've been seeing until now is the dashboard or the back end of our website because only we can see it since we're the admin of this website. Now if you want to see the front end of the website all you gotta do is hover on the site name and then click on the visit site option. Now here on this tab we can see the front end of our website and the whole world can see this portion of our website as well except for this admin panel bar, this black bar that you see here. For now our website is looking like this but surely we will change it the way we want but currently this is what the front end of our website looks like. Now before doing anything else I'm just gonna do some basic settings and to do that from settings go to general and from here you can change your site title. So here you can put your business name but I'm just gonna keep it the way that it is right now. And you can write some tagline here. But try to write something meaningful here because this will also help you to rank on Google search engines. So here I'm just gonna write best web design agency in California. Now you don't have to mess with these URLs here, just keep them the way they are. Then you can change the site language from here as well. And here's the different time zone option. And if you want to have any different format, like how you want the different day, month and year to be shown, you can change them from here. But I'm just gonna keep everything the way they are for now and click on save changes. Now the next thing I want to do is go under settings to permalinks. Now this part is very important too. Here you may see the permalink default structure is set to day and name. Sometimes you might see it set as plain but I highly recommend you to set it as post name because if you keep them as plain you see that any of your post page link or any other pages link would look like this which would be your website name dot com then forward slash and then this kind of bizarre number. But if you keep your permalink structure to postname, then your other pages URL would be like this. Your website name dot com forward slash, then the pages name or postname, which is more human readable. And it's also good for your search engine optimization. So I'm keeping it as postname, then scroll down and click on save changes. Alright, now the thing that we were talking about, the back end and the front end of our website. So this is the back end and this is the front end. So first of all, if you want to change the outlook and feel of your website, which is looking like this now, and to change it, you need to change the theme of your website. Now to do that, go back to dashboard, hover on appearance, then click on themes. And here you'll see some themes which came by default with WordPress installation. And currently this 2024 theme is installed and activated. But I'm gonna use Hello Elementor for this tutorial. And to do that go to add new theme from here or here. Here you can find a lot of free themes. So I'm gonna search for Hello Elementor from here. This one. Now install it and then activate it. Now if we go to the front end and refresh the page, we can see that the outlook and feel of our website has been changed. Now I know it's looking very plain and boring but no need to fear because the beer is here and I'll help you create everything step by step from scratch. Now from here on the first thing we need is the page builder. And like I said, for this tutorial, we will be using Elementor Page Builder, which is completely free. To get Elementor free version, you can just go to jimfadigital.com. I'll put this page's link down below in the description box. So from this page, if you just go under important links, 
you will see this get elementary free version so just click here and it will take you to the elementor pro purchase page now even though we will be using the elementor free version let me just give you a quick tour of the elementor pro version here so here if you use elementor pro version you will get more options and features like the 82 pro widgets theme builder form builder pop-up builder custom code and css and so many other features and options now you can take any of these plans according to your needs so that not only your own website but you can also create advanced websites for your clients such as blogs or advanced e-commerce websites and so on super easily but as i said for this particular tutorial we'll be only using the elementor free version so the first thing you need to do is create a free elementor account so to do that just click on this elementor logo here then from the top right corner click on login and of course first of all you need to create a free account if you already don't have one so from here click on create an account then here you can use any of your Google Facebook or Apple account or just your email so you can just click here continue with your email and then just put your email address and your password and you can create your free elementor account but as I already have an account, so I'm not gonna create a new one. I'm just gonna sign in with the one that I already have. So let me just click on sign in. Then click on sign in with your email. And here I'm just gonna put my email and password with which I have already created an Elementor account. And then I'm just gonna click on sign in. Go back inside of your WordPress dashboard. And then from here we need to install Elementor plugin, okay? And to do that from plugins go under installed plugins and you can add new plugin from here or you can just click here to add a new plugin which will take you to this plugins page and from here you can search here for the plugin that you want to install and I'm going to be installed Elementor page builder so I'm gonna type it here let's just type Elementor and here you can see the Elementor website builder and you can also notice that there are 5 million active installations like more than 5 million so basically a lot of people are using this it's that good so from here just click on install now and then click on activate and we can actually skip this onboarding so from here click on this X or cross and also let's just hide its notification from screen options and uncheck Elementor overview then close it now we actually need some more other plugins to work with so to do that let's go to plugins and click on add new plugins to install the other plugins and activate them and now let's search for elements kit and then install this elements kit elementor add-ons and we can actually activate all of the other plugins together so for now we're just going to install the other ones that we need so let's search for jag elementor kit and there you have it so let's just install it and then let's search for metform now install it now you might be wondering why I didn't activate all of them from here it's because as you saw that when we first activated Elementor page builder some pop-up pages popped up so to avoid that we're going to activate all of them together and now to do that let's go to installed plugins and as you can see Elementor is already activated so we're just going to select these three go to bulk actions and click on activate then click on apply now as you can see all of them have been activated great and now let's move on to the most exciting part so now I'm going to be showing you guys the power of Elementor page builder by creating our super cool awesome pages so now before doing anything else of course we need to create our pages right and to do that let's from the left side hover on pages and click on all pages now you will see some dummy pages here which were here by default but we don't really need these pages so select all of them together like before then go to bulk actions and click on move to bin then apply now I want to create our website's homepage first so to do that let's click on add new page from here 
Now let's give the title to our page, which is home. Then from top right corner, click on publish, publish it again. By the way, let me show you something interesting. Now, if we go to the front end of our website and then we refresh our front end, you can see that we are at the default domain, right? Which is gymtutes.com. But we can't really see the home page that we just created, right? Instead, we can see the blog post here. And why is that? Because by default, WordPress shows all the blog posts on the home page, which is the default settings. But we don't want this in our home page, right? We want a custom home page on the default URL. And exactly for that, we have created this home page. And now I want to set this page as the default home page. So to do that, let's go now to WordPress and go to settings and then click on reading. Here it says your home page displays and I'm just gonna select a static page. And as for our home page, I'm just going to select the home page that we created. Now let's scroll down and click on save changes. Now if we go to the front end of our website and then refresh it, we can notice the home page that we just created, right? And currently it's nothing fancy because we just created it. But you can clearly now understand how you can set a page to your home page. Now let's go back to the WordPress dashboard. Then go to all pages under pages. Now I just want to make you understand how the Elementor page builder works, which is really fun to work with. So from here, let's go to home page that we created and click on edit. And now of course I want to edit my home page with Elementor page builder. So let's click on edit with Elementor which will take us within Elementor Page Builder. Now let's just close this pop-up. Now we're finally inside our Elementor Page Builder, so now the actual fun begins. Now first of all, let me introduce you to this whole interface. Here at the top, we can see the logo. Basically, this is the header of our website, and this header is coming from our Hello Elementor theme. Then here we can see the footer, which is also coming from our theme. And here, this is the main canvas. And this beautiful canvas is where we'll be creating our website. And on the left side, all of these things that we see are the Elementor elements or the Elementor widgets. Like here we can see heading elements or heading widgets, then the image widget, the text editor widget, then button widget. Just name it and you'll find it here. But these are the free ones. Now if you scroll down and look at these widgets, you can see the lock icon, right? That's because these are only available to the pro users. So if you purchase Elementor Pro version, you will also get these widgets as well, like gallery, animated headline, price list, price table, and so much more. And not only these widgets, but you can also get access to advanced functions like e-commerce functions, block functions, and so many other pro functions. But as I said earlier, for this tutorial, I'll be using the Elementor free version. So we will just work with these ones and the other free widgets that we can find here. Now let me give you just a basic idea how this amazing page builder works. So first of all in this canvas we need to take a structure. So I'm just going to click on this plus icon. Then choose the flexbox layout and choose this one which is column directed. You can take any other structures if you want but for this tutorial I will be needing this one so I just took it. Now this is our container and to change its height you can just drag this minimum height wheel. And as you can see, the height of our container is changing as well. If you drag it to the right side, then the height is increasing. And if you drag it to the left side, then the height will decrease. So everything within this area is the canvas or your container. Now I'm just gonna keep it as 500 pixels, just like this. And for the moment, I'm just keeping the justify content to center. I'll explain these things later on as we go because if I explain it all together now then it might be a bit confusing for you. So let's just keep on working and stick with me. Now let's say if you want to give your container a different background color you can do that. And to do that just go under style tab from here. Then click on background type to this classic option. Then click on this color picker. And you can select any color from here like this. Just drag this color wheel to whichever color you want and you can play with all sorts of colors like this. Now for the moment I'm just gonna take this black color. 
Now within this area or this container, if you want to add any widgets, then you can just click on this plus icon. Or you can also do another thing. You can just go and click on this Rubik's Cube looking icon and you'll also get access to all these widgets. So you can find these elements from here or clicking on this plus icon of your container. So now for say if you want to add a heading to your container, all you got to do is drag this heading to your container like this. Now if you want to change the text, you can just triple click over this text here. Or you can change the text from this title field. I'm just going to write Jimfat Digital. Now if you want to do some styling with this text, you just got to go to the Style tab. You can then change the text's alignment from here. Right now it's left aligned as you can see, but you can change it to center aligned or right aligned or justified. I'm just going to keep it as center for now. And then from here you can change the text color which is by default getting this bluish color, cyan color I mean. But you can just open up this color picker and then just take any other color. For now I'm just going to keep it as white. And then from this typography option you can click on this pencil icon and change the font family to any other font. Here you can get access to all the free Google fonts. You can just select any of them. For example if I select this font. As you can see that our font has changed as well. How awesome is that? Also, you can search for any other fonts from here just by typing here. I'm going to search for one of my favorite fonts, Rosario. It's like this one. Then you can increase the size of your font by dragging this wheel to the right side or decrease it by dragging it to the left side. Then you can also make it bolder or thinner by selecting any of these. Now if you select light then you can see that the writing is so thin as well. And then you can also select bold and the writing becomes very bold as well. Then you can make the writing all uppercase or lowercase or capitalized as you wish. You can also change its style from here. You can make it italic and just like that you can play with all of these options. Then these options come very handy as well. For instance, if you drag this wheel here, the letter spacing wheel like this, you can see that the spaces between the letters increase or decrease as well, right? Now let's say if you want to add another heading underneath this one, then you have to first click on this Rubik's Cube icon. Now let's say I want to add some text underneath it, so I'm just going to drag this text editor widget underneath this one, like this. And currently, as you can see, that a dummy text is given, so you can change it from here or from here, like before. And then if you want to do some styling, then go to the Style tab. You can change the alignment from center aligned to right aligned, like this. And again, you can change the text color from here by clicking on this color picker. We're going to make it white so that it's more visible. And then you know we can change typography from the typography option. And you already know what all of these options do. Now I'm just going to increase its size a little bit. Like this. Now underneath this if you like let's say if you want to add any button. Then again go to the Rubik's Cube icon then click on it. And here as you can see there is this button widget. So just like before drag it and place it underneath this text editor widget. Now after dropping the button widget we can finally see this button here. Now instead of click here if you want this button to say anything else you can just change the text from here like contact now. And then within this link field if I write https colon forward slash forward slash jimfahaddigital.com which is our main website. Now clicking on this button will take someone to this link or website. Then by going under style tab you can change its alignment like this. And from here you can also play with the typography, the background type or color. For example instead of this green color I want to make it to this light purple color. So now our button color is this bright purple color. Now I want to show you something more interesting. Now as you can see that by default this button has this color but on hover I want to I want it to change its color. And how do I do that? To do that just go under this hover tab. Now from under hover you can just click on this color picker. For example I'm just taking this red color. Now let's have a look. 
as you can see in the normal state it's giving this um bright purplish color but when we hover over it the color changes to red how cool is that so this is the basic concept of normal and like hover colors and the overall features. Now let's say if you want to change or edit any of the elements or widgets that you have already put in your canvas, you can simply just click on that. And no matter which one you select, you will always get these three tabs, which are content, style and advanced. Now let's talk about the advanced tab. Now let's say for any of your contents you want to, like for example this text editor, if I want to put some space on top or bottom of this widget, I'll have to go to the advanced tab and then here from margin, first we're gonna unlink the values from here. Currently all the values are zero, but since we wanna add some space to the top and to the bottom, we're just gonna put the space value that we want. So let's say if I wanna put 20 pixel of space on the top, I will have to enter that value here. So from here, let's put 20. See how the top space changed? Now let's do the same for the bottom space. Let's say I want to put 30 pixel space. Now notice how we can play with the spaces of the elements from this advanced tab. So the simple summary is if you go to this content tab, then you can change the text or link or any other things related to that element's content. And by going under the style tab, you can change its alignment, text color, typography and all these things like the designing stuff of all these elements and from advanced tab you'll find these spacing settings and all these other settings as well and this is basically the main concept and then let's say if you have changed your mind and there is some element that you don't want in your container then you can just simply right click over that element and from there you can just delete it it's as simple as that now since i'm done with the explanation i'm just going to delete this whole container by clicking on this x and then our canvas is as good as new. Of course, I will be creating this whole website from scratch, step by step by using Elementor Page Builder. But this kitpapa.com is for those people who want to create their website really, really fast. Okay? So here, now, just let me give you a quick tour of kitpapa.com. Here, if you scroll down, you will find all the ready-made template kit for different kind of websites. It could be any website for education, or health medical, or SEO agency, food and restaurants, photography, you name it. You will almost find all website category within this kitpapa.com. And not only your business website, you can also create websites for your clients by using kitpapa.com's template kits, just within a few clicks. So here I'd just like to give you an example. Let's say you've got a client who's a lawyer, right? And he wants you to make his website really, really fast. Then you can just go inside this lawyer category. And here within this category page, you will find different types of ready-made kit for the lawyer category. So here, I'm just gonna go inside this kit and now just have a look. Now, one of the most interesting things about kitpapa.com is that before purchasing any website template kits, you can actually preview the whole website from here. You just need to click on this live demo. So you can see everything within this beautiful iframe. Then you can check all the pages, all the sections, the mesmerizing designs and effects. And from here, you can also go to other pages from the same place. And not only that, you can also check the responsiveness of the website template kit. You can just check the tablet view from here. You can check the mobile view from here. So you can check everything from here up front before even buying it. And then you can also check all the details about this kit. And another interesting thing is that with each of the kit, you'll also find a video installation guide. So instead of watching this three to four hour long tutorial, if you want to make your or your client's website really, really fast, you can just follow this three minute long video guide if you purchase this template kit. So from here, if you just play it, you see it's only three minutes, 20 seconds long. So just by following this three minute guide, you can install and activate and make your website or your client's website live. Okay. And then if you scroll up, you can see that their price is only $14.99, which is really affordable because you see, you can create this kind of multi-page website and you can charge your clients easily a couple thousand dollars for that. So it's a great win for you. 
And let's say if you're an agency or a freelancer and you need to create a lot of websites frequently for your clients, then you can actually take their buy all package. So right now you see there is a discount going on. So from here, click on grab the deal. So instead of purchasing each kit separately, you can get full access to all their already made existing template kits as well as the future ones. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see that currently they have more than 180 kits and they also add more than 10 kits every month. So you'll get access to these existing kits as well as the new ones that are yet to come only for $59 which is more than a great deal if you ask me and here for this particular tutorial let's go back to home page basically we'll be creating a website which will look like this so here I'm searching for SEO Lee so let's search for it and here is the kit let's click on it and like I said I will of course show you how to create this website from scratch step by step but now I just want to show you that if you don't want to follow this tutorial and if you just purchase this kit how easily you can install this kit on your website so here let's just say if you want to purchase this kit and I believe I don't need to show you guys how to purchase a kit it's pretty simple you just need to click on add to cart and you need to pay them 15 bucks and right after purchasing this kit, you will basically get a zip file just like this. And you need to import that kit on your WordPress website. I'm just going to show you quickly how you can do that. So you can just go to your WordPress dashboard. Now, this is a completely newly installed WordPress dashboard. I've just installed it only to show you how you can install the kit. And here, if I just go to appearance and then to themes, you can see that I've just activated the Hello Elementor theme here. And also, if we go to plugins, I have only installed and activated Elementor plugin, nothing else. Now to import the kit, all you have to do is just go to Elementor settings here, go under advanced tab and from here you need to enable unfiltered file uploads, this option so I'm just gonna enable it, then click on save changes. Now afterwards let's just go under features tab. So here the flex container is by default on so we don't need to do anything here. Just go under tools from here. Then click on import or export kit tab. Then from here import a template kit here. So just click on this start import option. And then here you just need to select the file that you have just purchased. So I'm just going to drag it here. Then make sure everything is checked and then click on next. Again, see if everything's checked and then click on import. And here, just wait a little bit, maybe around 30 to 40 seconds. Just don't close the browser, wait a little. All right, now it says that your kit is now live on your site. So just click on close. And now from here, if we just hover on our site name and click on visit site, there you go. The kit has been installed and activated properly as you can see and the site looks great. Here we can see that all the elements were installed and activated within seconds. So the home page is basically looking perfect. And then if you go to about page, everything is looking great here as well. So we have successfully installed and activated the template kit that we just purchased. Cool. But then again, if you face any problem, which I'm sure you won't, you can always just go to the product page and see the installation guide video from here. And if you need any kind of additional help, then you can just head to the Kit Papa footer. And then from this footer, you can just contact them from this support page. But once again, this is only for those who have less time and want to make their website really fast. But I'm just going to close it for the moment close this one as well because now I want to show you guys how to make our amazing website just like the one that you saw step by step from scratch by using Elementor page builder so let's now start by creating our hero banner area or parent banner and you guys already know that to create any structure first of all we need to click on this plus icon then choose flexbox so here we can see all the available structures and here I'm just gonna click on this column directed container so just to give this container width, I'm just gonna put a value manually here. Let's write 1290 pixels. And I'm gonna set its gap to zero. Then let's head on to style tabs. Uh, I don't think we need to do anything here for our parent container, but 
let's just head on to the advanced tab and for the padding let's unlink the values first and put the top padding to 200 pixels the right padding to 10 the bottom one to 80 and the left one to 10 all right we're done with the parent container of our home page now let's click on this plus icon and then drag another container here then let's put its width to 1290 pixels as well set its direction to row now as you can see that we've already taken this one parent container and we've taken another child container inside of it but since we're taking so many containers it can get a little confusing so to track these containers and to do your work more efficiently and more seamlessly what you can do is use this very useful feature which is the navigator so if you go here and then click on navigator you see it shows us that we have first of all taken one container and then inside of it we've taken another container so we can easily track the containers from here like this now just so we don't mix up the containers in between them we can just rename them like this so to rename them triple click on their names and then write the name that you want I'm just gonna name it parent banner container since this is going to be the banner of our home page so let's just type that then enter okay we're done now within this container I'm going to be taking more containers so to do that click on this container from this navigator here and then click on this plus icon here now from the widget section drag this container and put it within here and now let's rename this container as our left container now within this container I want to put a heading so from the widgets option click on this Rubik's Cube and search for heading okay we're gonna drag and drop this jacket heading so that we can put multiple headings at once and here in the jacket headings options you can see that under the content tab you can see all these settings like you can set its before focus title and focus title and after focus title so this is the focus title and whatever you put on before focus title that would be shown before this focus title and whatever you put here on the after focus title field that will go after this focus title all right now since we're making an SEO agency website I'm just gonna put some dummy text related to that here all right I'm done putting the dummy texts now let's just change the HTML tag to heading one and then I don't want this separator so let's just go to the separator drop down option and from this show separator option let's just turn it off now let's head on to the style tab and change its alignment to center from there let's head on to title now let's change the typography font family so to do that let's head on here and click on this pencil icon now from here let's search for manrope font let's click on it let's change its size to 78 pixels now we want our banner heading to look bolder so let's change its weight from here let's make it 600 actually let's make it 700 then for line height let's change its scale from pixel to em now let's put the value which is 1.2 now for letter spacing let's put the value to minus 1.92 all right we're done with the title now let's head on to focus title let's change its color from here I'm gonna put a custom color code here you can just follow the color that I'm giving or you can just give your own color as you wish let's write 6146E1 all right it's giving this wonderful violet or purplish color which is looking great for me now to change typography let's hold on here and click on this pencil icon and let's just change its letter spacing from here put the value to minus 1.92 all right we're done here now let's scroll up and let's head on to the advanced tab then let's put margin unlink the value first now let's just put the bottom value to minus 10 all right now our heading is looking pretty great but to change the way that it's appearing let's do some setting changes on its parent container which is this left container so just click on it let's change its content width to full width and change its width value to 45 percent all right now it's appearing in a more classy way 
Cool. Now, always remember to save your progress and work. So to do that, let's just click on that update button to save your work. All right, now the heading of our banner is complete. Now I just want to put some text under here. So to do that, let's just move on to this Rebus Cube icon. And now let's drag this text editor widget under this heading like this. Now I'll be back after just putting some dummy text here in this field. All right, I'm done with putting the dummy text. Now let's change its topography from the style tab. So let's just hit on here. And then let's change its font to Rubik. So like this one. Let's change its size to 20 pixels. Let's keep the width to as it is. And for line height, let's change its scale to EM and put the value to 1.5. All right, we're done here. Now let's head on to the advanced tab and let's change its margin. Let's unlink the value first and then just give the bottom value to 20. All right, I think we're done with our text here, but you see, I actually made a mistake here. And this is why I said earlier that the navigator is really useful because I actually wanted this text within our left container. But as you can see in the navigator that it's outside of our left container, it's within this container. But that's okay, no need to worry. Mistakes are the proof that you're improving, right? So from this navigator, we can just simply drag this text editor widget inside our left container like this. And now to align it underneath our heading, let's just click on this left container let's put the direction to vertical all right now it's finally looking perfect now I want to put an interactive button here and to do that let's just take another container underneath here so from widgets drag this container from here put it down here let's change it with to 1290 and then its direction to row align item setting to center and then Let's change its gaps to 30. And then from advanced tab, let's keep it padding to zero. All right, now we're finally done with our button container. Now let's finally drag the button widget from here. Let's just drag it within our container. And let's change our button's text from here because I want it to say this. Now let's head on to the style tab and let's change some settings with its typography. Let's change the font to Rubik. So like this one change its size to 16 pixels then weight to 400 and then line height to 22 pixels all right we're done with the typography now let's keep the text color to white okay and let's change the button color to 614 ce1 okay now as you can see our button color matches with our focus title which is looking really great now let's set the border radius to 12 pixels, all of them. And as for padding, let's unlink the values first. And then put the top padding to 14, right padding to 18, bottom padding to 14, and left padding to 18. Okay, now our button is looking great. But now as you can see, our button still looks pretty normal because there are no cool things or like our button is not that interactive so to make it interactive let's head on to the hover option and then let's change its text color to white and as for the background type I want it to change its color when I hover over it so let's change its background type so select this color picker and let's write a custom color which is 1f1 f25 okay we're done now we can finally witness the magic. So now it's looking pretty normal, but once we hover over it, it will change its color like this. Awesome. Now we're finally done with our interactive button. Now I want to put some reviews here. So to do that, let's go to widgets and let's drag another container here on the right of our button. Now let's do some container settings. So let's set its content width to full width. Change the width scale to pixels and put the width value to 300. Now let's give the direction to row and align items to center. Then finally, let's change the gaps to zero pixels. We don't need to do anything with the style tab. So let's just head on to advanced tab and then put all the padding values to zero. 
Now let's add some review images in this container. So to do that, let's head on to the widgets and let's drag this image widget in this container here. Now we can select our image from here. Now if you're guys following along with the whole tutorial and you want to put the exact images that I'm using in this tutorial, you can just go to this gymfadigital.com and from under important links you see this option download the resources i have used in the tutorial so here you'll get all the images that i have used in this tutorial so now from here let's choose our image let's click on select files so when you download the resources that i've used in this tutorial you'll basically find these two folders one is images and one is templates so just enter this images folder and here you can actually select every image one by one but i'm going to select all of them together to do that, just press on Ctrl plus A or Command plus A and then click on Open. Alright, as you can see, all the images have been uploaded. So now let's just select this one. Click Select. And there you go. Now let's do some styling from the Style tab. Let's put its width to 42 pixels. And then put its border type to Solid. Border width to 2 pixels, all of them. And let's choose its border color to white. And we want our review pictures to have a circlish border. So to do that, let's change the border radius to percentage scale and give the value to 50%. Now I want to put some more images here within this container, but we don't want to waste our time by styling all of them customly like we did for this one right now, right? So now to save our time, just right click on this pencil icon and click on duplicate. Let's duplicate it again. Great. Now let's change the pictures manually. So just click on this image and from this image, choose image option. Let's just select this one. Click on select. And as for this one, let's choose this image. Now for this image, let's just go to its advanced tab unlink its margin values and set left margin to minus 20. So now you see the one image overlapping another one. And again to save our time let's just click on this images pencil icon here. Right click on this and click on copy. Now this is a very important part. On this image right click on this pencil icon and here don't click on paste or paste from other side. Just click on paste style. So you see when you click on paste style, the settings that we've used in this image gets pasted on this image, which is a lifesaver because it saves you a lot of time. Now I want to show the ratings of our agency here. So to do that, let's head on to widgets and let's drag this heading here. Now let's change the title from here. Give it a dummy rating. And then let's head on to the style tab. Give it a custom text color write 614CE1 then let's change the typography change the font to Rubik make the size 14 pixels let's change the weight to 500 and let's set the line height to 1.2 EM now let's go to the advanced tab and link the margin values then just give the lift value to minus 20 and as for padding, let's unlink the values. Give the top value to 13, right value to 9, bottom value to 8, and left value to 9. Now as you can see that we can't really see the 4.8 writing here, like this heading. So from here, let's close this layout option. And let's click on this background drop down. And let's change the background type color from here. Let's give it a custom color code of F2, F2, F8. Okay, as you can see, now we can finally see our ratings. But right now it's in a square shape, right? So we have to change its border. And to do that, let's head on to border. Let's change the border type to solid. All of the border width to 2 pixels. Border color to white. And border radius, all of them to 50 pixels. Great, it's looking great now. Now I want to put some text here for our reviews. So from the widget options, let's drag this text editor here. And let's write based on 40 million reviews. Now from style tab, let's change the text color to 4F4F55. And let's change the typography to Rubik font. 
size to 16 pixels and line height to 22 pixels. Now let's save our work so far by clicking on this update button. Now we're finally done with the left section of our banner container. Bravo! And now since we are kind of familiar with all the settings and the widgets, we can do the right section really fast, right? So now let's minimize the left container. And now let's drag another container on the right side of our existing left banner. Okay, now let's change the content width to full width and the width value to 55%. Then let's head on to the style tab. Actually, we don't need to do any settings here, so let's just head on directly to advanced tab. And let's put the padding, so let's unlink the values first. And then put the top padding to 10 pixels, right to 30, bottom to 10, and left to zero. And let's rename this container as our right container. Okay. And then I want to put an image here in this container. So from the widgets options, I'm going to drag the image widget inside of this container. Now let's select an image from here. Let's select this one. Head on to style tab and give its width to 95 pixels. I mean 195 pixels. Let's go to advanced tab and from position set its position to absolute then give the horizontal orientation offset value to 40 pixels and I think we're done here okay now let's put our next image so from here drag this image widget again inside of this container oops it went outside <laughs> let's just bring it inside of this container okay you see, these are the times when I'm so grateful about the navigator because this kind of silly mistakes can waste so much of your time. All right, now let's again select the image. I'm going to select this one. Okay, it's finally getting along. Now let's select our final image for our right container. So drag this one again inside here. And then choose the image from here. Let's select this one. Let's make the image size smaller. So to do that, let's head on to style tab again and change its width to 280 pixels. Now if we scroll down, you see it has gotten so much smaller. Now let's head on to the advanced tab, set its position to absolute. And we don't want the images to overlap. So let's change the horizontal offset value to 85 pixels and vertical offset value to minus 70 pixels. And let's make the vertical orientation to this one, the bottom one. Okay, it's looking great now. Let's close the navigator so you can have a better look. All right, now let's save our progress up until now by clicking here. Now bring out our navigator again. And now since we're done with our banner top, we can finally proceed to do other works under here. So now I want to take another container here. So from here, let's drag this container underneath this one. And let's change the name of this container to child2 container because this one was our child1. So let's name this one child2. All right, now let's do some settings from here. So let's set the width to 1290 pixels and direction to row. Head on to the advanced tab and for margin let's unlink the values first and then just give the top margin to 180 pixels and let's leave the rest as is. And now within this container I want to take another container so from here let's just drag this one here and since this container is inside our child2 container let's just name this one inner child2 container. All right, then let's do its settings. Set the content weight to 1290, direction to row, and the line items to center. And for its padding, let's just set all of this value to zero. Now I wanna put a heading here. So from widgets, drag this heading widget here. Now here I'm gonna write trusted by top companies. Then from style tab, change its color to black 
and from typography, change its font family to Manrope. Then change its size to 20 pixels, weight to 700, and line height to 1.6cm. Then from Advanced tab, set its width to Custom, and Custom width value to 180 pixels. Now from here, just click here and press enter. Alright, it's looking great now. Now I want to put the company logos here. So to do that, so now let's drag a container from here like this. Now we actually want this container after this trusted by companies writing. So from here, let's just drag it down here. Alright. Now let's do some settings here. Set the width to 1290 pixels. Direction to row. Justify content to space between. And align items to end. Then head on to the advanced tab. Unlink the padding values. Then only put the left padding value to 150. Alright, now I want to put the images of the company logos in here. So by clicking on this plus icon, we get all the widgets again. And let's drag this image widget inside of this container. Now let's select the photo. Select this one. Then I want to put some other logos here. So you already know what to do. Just right click over this pencil icon and then click on duplicate. Duplicate it again. And again and again now let's select different images or logos so from here just choose this image and let's select this one then for this one let's select this one and for the last one let's select this one all right, now we're done putting the logos and our banner is looking super cool. Let me close the navigator to give you a preview of it. Let's save our work up until now. And now you know the background is still kind of looking a little dull and boring. So I want to put some cool colors on the background. And to do that, let's head on to widgets and search for HTML. And let's just drag this HTML widget. Actually, you can drag this widget anywhere in your page because only we, the admins, can see this HTML widget on the back end of our website. So it doesn't matter where you put it. So I'm just gonna drag it and then put it here in a brand new container. And now whatever coding I do here or whatever code I write here, it won't be shown to the other people of the world, like the people who are only going to see the front end of our website, right? So there's no need to worry about it. So from here, if you just go to jimfadigital.com and scroll down, you'll find this banner background CSS code, right? Which starts from here and then ends here. So you need to copy this whole thing from here select it from here and then scroll down and let's stop here now let's right click over here then click on copy to copy this portion now go inside of elementor page builder and then within this field right click over here and click on paste now you see even though we have put down the html code we can't really see our background change right that is because after putting the html code you actually have to put a class name to enable the effects of this HTML code, right? So to do that, let's head on to gymfiledigital.com again. And from here, you see the banner background class, it says. Now let's just copy this one. Right click, copy. So now let's head back to Elementor Page Builder. Then select this parent banner container. And here in the advanced tab, you see, you have this CSS classes field. You can put any CSS classes name here to activate the effect of the CSS code that you've put. So I'm just gonna paste the class name that we just copied. Select paste. And there you go. You see, we already have such beautiful background colors. So gradient and so beautiful. All right, now we're finally done with our parent banner container or our banner section. So let's just update our work. And then if we go to the front end of our website and then refresh it, 
Now you see, everything that we've done until now is now visible to everyone. This is how the front end of our website is now looking like. Great! Now this is only the desktop front end of our website, but we want our website to look good in all the other devices as well, right? So to make sure of that, let's head on to Elementor. And from there, let's just click on this responsive mode, like this desktop and mobile icon that you see. Click on it. Now if we head over here and then just click on this tablet portrait, this is how our website is currently looking like and what it will look like on all the tablet devices, right? But it's not looking that great. There are some problems here. So let's change some settings for the tablet view. Firstly, let's click on this parent banner container. From here, let's head on to the advanced tab. Let's change the padding values here. So let's just unlink the values first. Then put the top value to 140, right value to 10, bottom value to 80, and left value to 10. Then let's select this container. And here, let's select the direction to column directed. Then from advanced tab, actually we need to put this container's Z index value to 2. And the thing about Z index value is that whenever put something Z index value higher than any other one, then the one with the higher Z index value will always show more prominently or clearly in comparison with the other one. Now, since this is our parent banner container and I don't want any effects to overlap these writings and all of other things, that's why I put its Z index value to 2. Now, let's choose the left container and change its width to 100%. All right, I think we're done here. Now let's head on to, I mean, inside the left container and then choose jacket heading. Here, let's just change the margin of it. So let's just unlink the values first and then put the bottom value to minus 20. Then let's go to the text editor and change its margin to only 10. Then let's choose our button and review container. And here, let's go to the layout tab and then put its gaps to 30 and from advanced tab I think everything is looking great so we don't need to change anything here now let's minimize this left container and choose the right container and from layout let's change its width to 100% and then from the advanced tab let's only put the top margin value to 50 and let's set all the padding values to 10 now let's just scroll down to see what we've done. All right, all of it is looking great. Now if we scroll down even further more, we need to do some settings in our logo section. So let's just choose child2 container. And from here, we have this inner child2 container. So from layout, let's make its direction to column, align items to start, and gaps to zero. Then from the advanced tab, um, we don't really need to change anything here. Everything is looking great. So let's just go to the logo container and Here, let's just go to the advanced tab and then make all the padding to zero. Oh and from layout Let's set the gap values to 50 all of them All right now. Let's see what we've done Okay, everything with the tablet device responsiveness is looking great. So let's move to the mobile version now let's change some settings here as well. So from the parent container, let's choose the parent container, then go to its layout. Now you see here the background color settings that we've done, like the CSS code that you've put. Due to that, our mobile responsiveness is looking so big just for the color. So it's currently overflown from our parent container and we don't want that, right? So to cancel that, from here, minimize this drop down container and from additional options, set the overflow to hidden. See, now the body is only within our parent container and the colors are not overflown. Okay, now let's head on to the advanced tab, unlink the padding values, then put the top padding to 100, right to 10, bottom to 80, and left to 10. Now from within parent container, let's choose this container, this child1 container. Actually, it might get a little confusing for you when I'm naming them, so let's just rename it to child1. All right. 
then from layout let's see if we do any changes um we don't everything is looking good so within this child one container let's select this left container then again let's go to its layout everything is looking great here as well so let's enter the left container and within this let's choose the jacket heading okay we need to change some settings here uh, so let's first head on to content tab mm, everything is looking great then head on to style tab here from title let's change the typography size to 42 pixels you see now the heading is fitting in our screen completely now let's close the title drop down then enter the focus title and also for its typography let's change the size to 42 pixels all right now let's minimize this left container and choose the right container then from margin let's just unlink the values and change the top value to 30. let's scroll down and from here as you can see everything is overlapped here so from the right container let's select these images and on the mobile view we don't really want to show these two images so let's just hide them now to hide them go to the advanced tab minimize this drop down and from responsive swipe this option this one hide on mobile portrait now as you can see that this image will be hidden for all mobile devices now let's do the same for this image as well click on here and from advanced tab let's minimize this one go to responsive and hide okay now everything is looking great here so let's choose the child 2 container and here let's change its margin let's only change the top margin to 50 pixels and then put the z index value to 2 and then let's select this heading and from under style tab change the alignment to left and from typography change the size to 18 pixels now head on to advanced tab and let's change the margin a bit so unlink the values and only put the bottom value to 45 so now there's a similar space between all of them then select this container i mean our logo container let's change the justify content setting to center then align items to center and let's put all the gaps to 30 and then turn on wrap now we want to show these logos side by side one after one and to do that let's select this image and from content sorry i mean from advanced tab let's change the width to custom then put the custom width value to 40 percent now to make this whole section look like this you already know what we gotta do let's just click on this one's pencil icon here right click over it then click on copy and just paste the settings of this one by paste style to these other logos or images so for this one let's right click over here then select paste style do the same for this one as well and finally for this one okay now finally everything is looking just the way that we wanted it to look like uh, okay the mobile version is looking awesome let's head on to the tab version this one is looking great as well our hard work finally paid off then let's check the desktop version and of course this one is already looking great all right now finally our banner section is all complete congrats now let's just update our work just to be safe now before moving forward i want to show you something really important so let's just close this responsive mode and this navigator as well and now if we scroll up and then select this heading then go to the style tab now let's say if we enter any of these headings like for instance let's just select this one title and you probably remember that we have changed so many settings here like for this section from typography we have changed its font family and we've changed its size and all of these other things that we seemed necessary right 
Now just like this if you want to reuse any color or any font settings that you have already used over and over again on your website there is actually a more efficient and like the best way to do that. Now let's say we've used this purplish color for our heading and let's say if we give any further headings in our website then we would want to reuse this color once in a while right so to save your time or let's say you don't like this color anymore and after a month probably you just want to change these color schemes to another one right then if you change like the color of each of the headings one by one then it would take you so much time and like you would have to do double the work right which is a big waste of time so now what if i tell you that you could actually change the color of your headings from one place and one place only wouldn't that be a lifesaver for you life and time of course and that's where the global setting comes in so to select the settings of all of your headings or the selected ones that you want you can use the global settings feature to do that in a very short amount of time now to do that let's just head on to this hamburger looking icon or like three lines let's just click on it then from here if we go inside of site settings then if we go inside this global colors option then here we can see primary color, secondary color, text and accent color. So I would just like to change them first. Then you can actually add more custom colors like you want. So now first let's just change the primary color to the one that we want instead of this one like this cyan bluish color. So now let's just click on this color picker. Then let's give a custom color code. Let's write 614CE1. See now we're getting this purplish color that we used in our heading. Then let's change the secondary color from here. Let's write 1F1F25. Then let's change the text color. Let's change it to 4F4F55. And then for the accent color let's keep it clear like let's just reset it. Okay now we can just head outside. Wait, actually I forgot to put in other custom colors. Okay, so let's just save this and then head on to global colors again. Then let's add our custom colors which we will be needing in the future. So the first one, let's add a white color. Let's name it white color. And then from the color picker, you can either choose this white color from here or you can just write here six Fs which will give you the same white color. Then let's create our second custom color. Let's name it border color. So now from color picker, let's put the custom code, which is BCBFDB. All right, now let's create our next color and then name it border color two. Now from the color picker, Let's put the color code. Let's write D7D9E9. And as for our last custom color, let's name it background color or BG color. And from the color picker, let's put the code F2F2F8. Alright, now we have this series of custom colors which we will be using in the future. Now let's click on update here. And then let's just leave this option. Now let's head on to global fonts here and then let's change our font settings. So for the primary font let's click on this pencil icon and for its font family let's choose manrope. Click this one. Then let's change the size to 16 pixels. Wait to default. Now for the text font let's select here and let's change the font to rubik click this one then give the size to 16 pixels change the line height to 1.2 em now let's head on to the secondary font option change the font to roboto this one this one here all right we're done here now let's change the accent font change its family to rubik this one then let's change its size to 16 pixels weight to 400 and line height to 18 pixels all right we're done with the font settings these are the fonts that we will be using so let's just update our progress then let's 
head on back. Now let's enter typography from here. And then let's set this text color to 4F4F55. Now let's click outside and from this typography option, change the font family to Rubik. Choose this one and let's change the size to 20 pixels. Then the weight to 400 and line height to 1.5 em. Now click outside and set the paragraph spacing to 0 pixels. Ok, now we're done with the body, so let's head on to link. Now here, from this normal option, we can actually choose the colors from the global colors that we just set before this one. So from here, just click on this globe icon and then let's select this primary color, the one that we just set up, right? So let's select it. Now for its typography, let's set the family to man rope. Size to 48 pixels. Oops, um, actually 16 pixels. And weight to 700 bold. And the letter spacing to minus 0 0.3. Alright, now we're done with the link option as well. Let's head on to the heading. Heading 1, I mean. So let's set its color from the global and let's set it to secondary, the global secondary color. And then from typography, let's set the family to man rope. size to 78 pixels, weight to 700 and line height to 1.2 em. Alright, we're done here but actually you can also do the responsive settings from here as well so that you don't need to change all the fonts both in the desktop version, then tab version and then mobile version. Now the tab version is pretty similar so we don't really need to change the settings of that one but let's change the settings of the responsive mobile version or the mobile view. So let's select this one and let's just change the size to 60 pixels. Now let's head on to the heading 2. Actually uh, let's do the responsive settings later. So first of all let's just do our desktop view settings. So from here just switch to desktop. Ok, let's just change our desktop settings first, then we will change the mobile view as well. So inside of heading 2, let's change its color to global secondary color, which is this one. Then from typography, change its family to man rope. This one. Make its size to 48 pixels. Weight to 800. Line height to 62 pixels. Letter spacing to minus 1.92 pixels. Now let's head on to heading 3 and for the color of heading 3 from global settings let's change its color heading to global secondary color and from typography option let's again change the family to man rope then its size to 20 pixels then let's change the weight to 700 then the line height to actually let's keep the weight to 800 and the line height to 1.3 em. Ok, we're done with the third heading or h3. Now I know that putting the global settings can be a bit too boring but trust me it will save you days of hard work when you need it. So this is really helpful and you should always be grateful for this feature. Ok, let's head on to heading 4 and let's change its color to global secondary color. Then from typography Let's change the font to man rope and the size to 20 pixels, weight to 700 and line height to 1.6 em. Alright, we're done with H4 as well. Now let's go to H5. Let's set its color to global secondary color. Then from typography, let's change the font family to man rope again. Give the size to 18 pixels, weight to 800 and line height to 1.2 em. Ok, now let's head to heading 6, the last one. And let's set its color to global secondary color. Then from typography, make the font man rope. Make the size 18 pixels, weight 800. Actually, let's make the size 16 pixels. 
and the weight to 700. Okay, then the line height to 1.2 EM. Alright, now we're done. So let's check the responsive version as well for the mobile version. So we've already done the responsive of H1, but just to be sure, let's check it again from here. Switch it to mobile version. Okay, yeah, we've done the configuration. Now let's head on to H2 and from typography, let's change the size to 34 pixels and the line height to 40 pixels. Now for heading 3, let's from typography, change the size to 30 pixels and we're done. We don't really need to change H4, 5 and 6. So let's update our work. Okay, now let's head outside. Then let's go to this buttons options. And from the button global setting, let's first select this typography and change the family font to Rubik. Then change the size to 16 pixels, weight to 400, line height to 26 pixels, and letter spacing to 0 pixels. Okay, now from this normal tab, let's change the text color to white. And for the background type, let's from here, you can actually give the manual color from here or just select the global primary color from here. Okay, now for border radius, let's set all the values to 12 pixels. And then for padding, let's unlink the values first. Then set the top padding to 14 right to 18, bottom to 14, and left to 18. Okay, now let's head on to the hover tab. And from hover, let's change the background type because we want to change the color of our background when we hover on a button. So from here, let's select this color picker and put in a manual color code of 26262C. All right, we're done with button sections as well. Now let's update our settings. And let's just go outside. Let's click on this crossbar. Now an important thing is sometimes what happens is that even after putting global settings, some things like uh, the colors, the fonts, sometimes they get their colors from the theme settings, right? To avoid that confusion, what you can do is first of all, click on this hamburger icon, then click on exit, click on apply, and then click on leave. Go to the WordPress dashboard and then you can go to the Elementor and click on settings. Now these two settings like these two options that you see here disable default colors and disable default fonts. We need to check these two because as I said earlier, sometimes the colors get registered from the default themes. So we don't want that. We want the colors to get their settings from the global settings that we've just done. So to make sure of that, let's check on these two settings. Then click on save changes. Now we can again go to pages and to all pages. Then in this home page, let's just click on this edit with Elementor option. All right, now we've made sure that these colors don't come from the theme settings and rather it would surely come from the global settings that we've just done. Oh, and by the way, in Elementor, there are some values that are given by default. Like for example, if we click on this container, you see the gaps, we have made them zero here, but usually when you take a container, the default gaps of those containers are always 20. And you might have also noticed that when we take a container, the width is usually 1140 pixels by default. So if you want, you can also manipulate these settings or these values from global settings as well. So to do that, you will have to go here and then go to site settings. And then from this layout option, you see, these are the default gaps that are given. I mean default gaps and values and all other things. So you can also change them if you like, but I'm used to working with them the way they are. So I'm not going to change any of them, but this is also an option that you can consider. Also, this white color that you see is coming from the theme, right? But sometimes there may be some themes which may come with different colors. So if you want to change the theme color as well, then you can go outside and from this background option, 
you can also make sure that you're getting the color that you want from your theme so from here if you go and click on this color picker and then you can choose this white color so that it will always show white and not any other color from the theme okay then click on this update button also if you now go back and then click on this crossbar now you see whenever you take a widget uh, for example let's take a look at this button so from here if you right click on this pencil icon then you get all these options right edit button duplicate delete and all these other stuff but let's say you want to work more efficiently and for that you want some of these options to come very handy and want them to show right here beside this pencil icon so for that you can also try the global settings as well so you can just go to the global settings and then click on user preference and here you see this editing handles options is by default turned off but now if I turn it on and then hover on it again you see you already get these additional features like this additional options that you can quickly click on to do your work for example you can just duplicate this button or you can just from here delete it see so this is a very handy option that you might also consider having and also now if we again go to user preference this is the panel width which is the width of this panel so if you want you can increase or decrease it from here by default because even if you increase or decrease it now what will happen is when you refresh any page it will go back to its default size which is 300 width so if you want to change its default value you can also do that but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is also you can change the UI theme from here so currently it's probably light but you can also make it dark and you can see you can tweak all these settings as you like now let's head outside so now let's just click on this update button so that we can save everything and every settings that we've done by the way there is one important thing to remember and that is whenever you do global settings always remember to refresh the page from here because what happens is sometimes due to cache issues or any other issues your global settings might not get registered if you don't reload the page so you can just refresh the page from here and then you can check if the settings that you've done are still there which in my case are so yeah that's totally fine so like usually those errors don't really happen but just to be on the safe side you can always reload the page to make sure that your settings got saved and actually not just for global settings whenever you do anything in Elementor and you feel like you have done everything right but still there's something that's looking fishy and not looking right just the way that you want it so in that case always remember to reload the page because that might solve your issue because after all Elementor is a live editor right so whatever you do is getting registered online at the moment so always make sure to refresh your page so that you don't lose any progress or you don't have any cache or error issues okay all right now that we're pretty much done with understanding the concept of global settings we can now head back to our website creation and since we've already made the banner for our home page now let's say I want to make a services section here so in the services section it will be showed what services this SEO agency provides all right so let's get started with the services section I can't wait to complete our website as soon as possible because I really want you guys to show how powerful Elementor page builder is and how easily you can make your website with it so now let's take another container from here if we click this plus icon here then on top of our HTML container another new container will be open so let's just click on this plus icon here and then click on this choose the flexbox and for direction I'm gonna take this column directed now let's click on the six dots so we're making sure that we're working with this container alone also let's bring out our old friend navigator and since this is going to be our services section so let's just name our container services container now let's do some settings with this container so as you can see the default width is given so let's just change it to 1290 and then head on to the advanced tab and put on the padding values so let's just unlink them first and then put the top value to 85 right value to 10 bottom value to 85 and left value to 10 
Now, since you guys already know about how to put these settings, I will not be elaborating them that much from now on. I'll just put the values as we go and the things that I've already mentioned, you can just always go back and watch it if you need to understand them again. So from now, if anything new comes up, I will be sure to explain that to you guys. But for these kinds of, you know, like putting paddings and margins and all those things, I will try to give less explanations here so that you can save a lot of your time. Okay. Okay, now since we're done with the parent container, let's take another container inside of this one. So from here, just drag this one here. And then let's name this one child container one. Also, let's name the container with the HTML, HTML container so that you guys don't get confused. Now let's head back to our child container one. And for this one, also change the width to 1290. And from advanced tab, make all the padding to zero. Now I want to put a heading inside of here, which will say our services. So sorry, from the Rubix icon, let's drag this heading widget here. And in this text field, let's write our main services. Now from the HTML tag, let's change this one to heading six. Remember the global settings that we've done? So this H6 is actually from those settings that we've done. And that's the perks of doing global settings because now we don't need to do much setting manually. We can just change them from here and it will get the manual global settings that we did. So now from style tab, let's align it to center. Change the text color to global primary color. And from typography, Let's actually make the size of it a bit smaller. So let's make a size to 14 pixels and weight to 500. Okay, now from advanced tab, let's unlink the values first and let's put the bottom value to minus 10. Okay, now we're done with our first heading. Now let's put another heading underneath it. So from the widgets, let's bring another heading underneath it. Okay, now I just wanna write here our solutions that help you grow up. Now let's go to the style tab, align it to center from advanced tab, unlink the values and put the bottom margin to 40. Then for padding, let's change the pixel scale to percentage scale. Then unlink the values and right value to 30% and left value to 30% as well. All right, now we're done with our child one container or child container one. So now let's close this one. And then within this services parent container, I want to take another child container. So from widgets, drag this container here. Okay, now you can see that this container is inside this container. Now let's rename it. Okay, now let's change its width 1290, direction to row, gaps to 40, all of them. Okay, now inside this child container too, I want to take it's inner child container, so let's click on this plus icon and drag this container here. And let's name this one IC1 container, which is like short for inner child one container. Then make its width to 100%. Also make its content width to full width. Then from style tab, change its background type. And let's put the color to F2, F2, F8. Okay, now then from border, border type to solid, border width to one pixel, all of them, and border color to global border color, let's select this one, and border radius to 16 pixels, all of them. Okay, now from advanced tab, put all the padding to 32 pixels. All right, now inside of this one, this inner child one container, I wanna take another container. Then let's change its width 1290. Direction to row, align items to center. And then from advanced tab, all the padding to zero. Actually, uh, let's put the bottom padding to 10 pixels. Okay, now within this container, I wanna take an icon. Okay, so from here, let's search for icon widget this one now let's drag this one and drop it here now from here if you click here you'll you can find all these icons so i'm just gonna search for the clock icon this one select then click on insert then from view change it to stacked 
and the shape is circle so it's fine now let's go to the style tab let's align the icon to left and in normal settings let's change the primary color to okay let's actually put a manual color from here so let's write dfdb f9 and then from secondary color oops uh let's select from here and select the global primary color okay then change its size to 30 pixels and give it a padding of 20 pixels sorry 20 then from advanced tab let's unlink the margin value and put the bottom value to minus 7 and set the align self to start let's remember to update our work now here within this container let's take a I mean from the widgets option let's take a heading here on the right of the icon and then write engaging content now let's set the HTML tag to h4 all right now from the widgets option let's drag this text editor underneath here okay now I'll be back after putting some dummy text here okay I'm done with putting the dummy text now from the style tab from typography let's change it to global text okay and then from advanced tab let's unlink the values of margin and put the bottom value to 10 now from the widget sections let's search for a widget named icon list this one now drag it underneath here now here if we click over this one you see we can now put multiple icons and like change multiple icons with texts so this is like a combination between text editor and icons isn't that cool okay now from the icon library let's search for actually let's take this one click insert and then put a dummy text here then for this one let's again put a dummy text here and change the icon to this check circle okay let's search for that this one and now for the last one let's again select the icon to check circle and then let's put a dummy text here and we're done here now afterwards let's put a button underneath all of this so from widgets let's drag this button widget here now let's write get started and then from style tab let's align it to justified all right now let's update it now from the style tab let's set the space between to 10 pixels and then from icon let's set the color to global primary color and set the size to 16 pixels then set the vertical alignment to center and adjust vertical position to minus one pixel then from text let's from topography set it to global text then from advanced tab let's unlink the values and set the bottom value to 25 all right now let's do the life-saving hack of the art of duplicating so from here let's click on this duplicate container and then click on it again <laughs> it saved us so much time you see now for the third one let's just okay you know what let's go to the navigator and minimize this inner child one container and you see all of them are currently named as inner child one because we duplicated them from here so now let's just rename them to inner child two and three okay now for the third child container we're just gonna change some dummy texts here like let's just change its heading so let's write boost search and then let's change the icon as well so from here let's search for telegram plane this one okay now we're done with this one now for the middle one I mean the inner child 2 container we're gonna do some settings because this is the middle one and we want it to be a little more highlighted than these two so let's do some settings with this one so let's go to the style tab and change its color to I mean from here global primary color okay then for this icon let's click on this icon and select a new icon let's search for gem and select this one 
let's do some styling for this one so here let's set the primary color to let's put a manual code which is 8170E7 and for the secondary color let's make it to global white color okay now we're done with the icon let's change the writing colors as well so that they're more visible so I'll select this one select this heading let's write SEO services and then from a style tab let's change its text color to global white color okay then head on to this one and again from style tab let's change the text color to global white color and then for this one let's go to the style tab and for icon let's change the color to global white color and then for text let's again change the color to global white color okay now it's more visible as you can see now for the button from style tab let's change the text color to global primary and change the background type color to global white color okay now you can see how this one is more in contrast in comparison with these two so it's standing out even more all right we're finally done with our services section let's update our work and save it also now from responsive section here let's ensure that it's also looking great on the tablet and mobile devices so first of all let's go to the tablet device okay as you can see it's too long and not looking that great so we need to do some work here so let's start from the beginning so from here let's select this heading here and from the advanced tab let's change the padding a bit so from 30 let's make okay sorry let's unlink the values first and then make it to 15 and left value to 15 as well okay it's looking great now let's select child container 2 and here if we scroll down yeah um let's justify the contents to center and put the gaps to 30 all of them and select wrap now let's select inner child 1 container and make its width to 47.5 percent okay now you guys already know what to do from here let's just click on copy then right click over here and click on paste style then do the same for this one as well all right now they're looking great and now let's check the mobile view then let's select the services brand container and from advanced tab Let's change the padding a bit and link the values first and make the top and bottom value to 80 and the right and left value to 10 then let's head to child one container and let's select this heading and from advanced tab let's unlink the margin values and give the bottom margin to 10 pixel and for padding let's make all of them zero okay now for child 2 container, I mean child container 2, let's head inside in our child 1 container and from advanced tab, let's change the padding values. So make the top and bottom padding to 32 and right and left padding to 20. Okay, now from here, let's right click over this container and select copy then over this one right click again and paste style now for the last one again go here and right click over it then click on paste style okay now everything is looking great for our mobile view and we're done with our services section and its responsive view as well so now let's update our work let's close the responsive mode and now so far it's looking great we're done with our banner container and then our services container looks great as well now in our home page I want an about section where it would be written what this website or our agency is all about so from navigator let's minimize the services section and let's scroll down and over this one I want to create another container which will be our about section so let's click on this plus icon choose this select this column directed container and let's name this our about section parent container so in short let's just write about parent container now let's do some settings here change the width to 
you know what 1290 pixels and then from additional options let's hide the overflow and from advanced tab let's put the padding values so unlink it then put the top value to 65 right value to 10 bottom value to 130 and left value to 10 as well now inside this container i want to take another container where we will put our headings so let's name this container our heading container let's do some settings with this one as well put the value to 1290 pixels and leave the rest as they are now the fun part about making web pages is that if you have already created any sections like this you can just copy some elements from here and then just put it to your new container and we're going to do the same so from here i'm just going to select this one this first heading and then i'm going to click on copy and then in this heading container i mean this one we're gonna right click over it and then click on paste see now it's already here now we are just gonna change the text from here so let's write a little about us and then in the same way let's scroll up and click over this one then right click over it and click on copy then scroll down and now click on this I mean this heading container and here let's just underneath this one let's click on paste See how easily we got all the already done settings and ready-made heading here. So from here, let's just put the dummy text. And now we're already done with the heading for our about section. How fast was that? Let's update our work. Now in this about section, I want to put an image in the background. So for that, okay, let's just organize it here. Now let's minimize this services section since we don't need it currently anymore and in this about section let's just put another container inside of this heading container so from here let's click on add new container and now you see this container is within our about parent container so now let's change its content width to boxed and width to 1290 minimum height to 560 pixels Mm, okay it looks great now from style tab from background type let's click on this classic and then from image let's select this image then from position let's set it to center center and attachment to fixed then repeat to no repeat and display size to cover and then from border Let's set the border radius to 16 pixels, all of them. Okay, now it's looking great. Now I want to give some pointers on what our agency does. So let's take another container inside of this about section. So from here, if we just click on this images, right click over this edit container and click on add new container then there's another container okay so just so we don't get them mixed up let's name this one background image container okay and this one the pointers container since we'll be giving pointers on what our agency does so now let's do some settings with this one set the content width to boxed and width to 1290 then direction to row and gaps to 30 all of them and from advanced tab let's unlink the margin value and give the top margin to minus 110 then give padding to it and give the right and left padding to 60 and also set its z index value to 1 now inside this pointers container I want to take some inside pointers container so let's drag a container here and let's rename this inside pointers containers which is let's make it pi1 container okay and then let's change the content width to full width and then from style tab go to background type classic and pick the global white color then from border let's set the border type solid 
border width to 1 pixels, all of them, and border color to global border color, then border radius to 16 pixels, all of them. Then head on to advanced tab and set all the padding to 32 pixels. Now let's save our work up until now. And then I want to put a heading in this pointers container. So from this plus icon, let's drag this heading here. And let's just write 01. Set its HTML tag to H4. And from style, let's change text color to global primary color. Then from typography, let's change its size to 28 pixels. Weight to 800. Then click outside and from advanced tab, let's only set the bottom margin value to minus 10. Now let's take another heading underneath this one. So from widgets, drag this heading here, then put a dummy text here, set its HTML tag to H4, then from style tab, set text color to global text color and in advanced tab let's only set the bottom margin value to minus 5. Now underneath this heading I wanna take a text editor so from here let's drag it here and let's put a dummy text here then from style let's change the typography to global text. Now from this one you already know what's gonna happen so let's just from here let's duplicate this one and then duplicate it again and there we go now we have our own and different pointers boxes let's rename these ones so let's just minimize this one and then rename this two then let's just change its content so i'll be right back after putting some different dummy text from this one so Alright, now I'm back after putting the dummy text here, so let's just save our work up until now. And now actually I want to put a little description about what our agency does, I mean our SEO agency. So underneath this one I'm gonna put a little description about us. And for that let's just head over here, right click over it and select add new container. Okay, now we have this new container where we will be putting our description. So let's just rename it as description container for short. Now let's make the content width to boxed and weight to 1290. Then from advanced tab, change the padding, so unlink it. So this one should be 55. And this one is 50 then this one is 115 and make this one 50 now inside of this container let's click on this plus icon and drag this text editor inside of it then let's put a dummy text here now from style tab let's set the alignment to center and then text color to global secondary color and from typography let's change the font family to Rubik and size to 28 pixels then weight to 400 and line height to 1.5 EM all right now we're done putting the description so now let's again create a new container and inside this one we're gonna put the statistics like the counters and stuff so let's name this one counters container then from layout tab change its content width to boxed and width to 1290 pixels direction to row justify contents to space between and then we're done with the settings so now let's inside this counters container we want to put a counter widget so we'll click on this plus icon and search for counter this one, let's drag this one inside of here. And then let's set the ending number to 2 and number suffix to capital B. Then set the animation duration to 500, sorry, I mean 500 ms. And let's just give it a title of related keyword. 
All right, now from the styling tab, let's change the text color to global primary color. And from typography, let's set the size to 48 pixels. Now from these counters, let's just duplicate this counter to make other counters as well. Click on it again and another time. Okay, now we have four counters here. Now I'll be back after setting their values and writing their titles. So just stay here. All right, now I'm back after putting the dummy texts and numbers. And as you can see that finally our about section is completely done and it's looking great. Good work. So now let's check the responsive mode of our about section. So from here, go to responsive mode. Then let's first check the tablet view. Then inside this about parent container, then let's go to the background image container and let's set its minimum height to 480 pixels. Okay, it's looking great. Now from the pointers container, let's justify the contents to center, then make it wrap. You see, now it's coming one after one. Now from here, head on to pointers inside one container, this one, and let's change the width to 47.5%. Now from here, right click over it and then click on copy and then here right click again and click on paste style. Then do the same for this one. Okay, it's looking great. Now let's minimize this one, head into this one and then click on this one. Now from the advanced tab, let's make the width to custom and then give it a value of 48%. And then from here, right click over this pencil icon, click on copy, and then you already know what to do. Right click over this one, and click on paste style. Do the same for this one, and then this one. Okay, now they're perfectly aligned and looking great. Okay, so the tablet view is looking great. Now let's update our work. And then head on to the mobile view. Here, let's see if we need to do anything with this one. Yeah, actually, we need to go to the advanced tab and then change the padding values. So let's make this one 20. This one 10. 10 is okay. And then this one 50. And let's keep this one 10 as well. All right, so now from the background image container, let's set the minimum height to 350 pixels. Then from this pointers container, let's head on to the advanced tab. And then from padding, let's unlink the values first. And set the right padding to 15 and left padding to 15 as well. Now from inside of this container, let's click on this one. And then from advanced tab, let's unlink the values. Set the top and bottom value to 32 and right and left value to 20 pixels. Now from here, you again know what to do. So from here, right click over this one and then click on copy, then paste the style to these two, like this, then this one. All right, it's finally looking great. So let's minimize this one. And from the description container, let's go to the advanced section and yeah, let's change the padding values. So for top one, Let's give it 25, right to 10, bottom to 20, and left to 10. Then from here, go inside of description container and then click on text editor. And from style tab, from typography, let's change the size to 22 pixels. Okay, now let's minimize this one. And then from the counters container, let's click on this counter. Then from here, advanced tab. Let's change the custom width to 46%. Then head on to the style tab. And from this number typography, let's change the size to 36 pixels. And line height to 1.5 EM. Then let's go to the title dropdown. And from typography, let's give it a size of 16 pixels. And line height to 1.2 EM. All right, now let's click on here. Sorry, I mean this one, this pencil icon. Then click on copy and then paste the style to these ones. So here, let's click on paste style. And then this one. And then this one in the end. 
All right, so now finally the responsive mode of our tablet view and mobile view is also finally done. So let's update our work, then go to the desktop version, close responsive mode. And now let's create the testimonial section. So first let's create our container, take this one here, then actually drag this one over HTML. And let's rename this as our testimonial parent container. Now let's change its width to 1290 pixels, direction to column, then from style tab, let's change the background type, so from here let's click on color picker, and put a manual color of F8, F9, FB. Alright, then from advanced tab, let's set the margin value, I mean only the bottom value to 50, and for padding, Top to 85, right to 10, bottom to 150, and left to 10. Then let's take a heading inside of this one. And we don't want to create a new heading again. That would be so much work. So let's just go to the about parent and then click on this one. Now let's from here copy this one. Scroll down and here right click and click on paste. Now let's do the same for this one. Right click, copy scroll down and paste okay now i'm just gonna put some dummy text here and then i'll be back all right i'm done putting the dummy text now click on this heading and from style tab let's align it to left and then select this heading and from the advanced tab let's change the padding and let's set the right padding to 50. Also from style tab, let's align it to left as well. Okay, now since we're done with our heading, now we're gonna put our testimonials here. So let's add another container, go to widgets and drag this container underneath here. Now let's change its width to 1290, direction to row and make all the gaps 240. Then from advanced tab, let's set the padding to zero, all of them. Then from widgets, let's search for testimonial. Okay, now let's select this one and grab it here, then put it inside of here. Then from layout, let's select this one. Now let's click on this testimonial section. So from here, if you click on one of these testimonials, let's select this one. You see, you can add the client name, their designation, their testimonial and what reviews they left and their rating and then their avatar and logo as well so i'll be back after putting the dummy testimonials here in these fields okay so i'm done putting all the dummy names reviews and pictures so now let's go to the settings and then change slides to show to three then change the show dots to yes and now let's go to the style setting and from layout give the column gap value to 10 pixels Padding to 30, all of them. Border radius to 16 pixels. And from normal, let's set the border type to solid. Border width to 1 pixel, all of them. And then from border color, let's set it to global border color. Then from wrapper content style, let's keep the horizontal element to left. Then from description, set color to global secondary color. And from typography, change the font to manrope size to 16 pixels weight to 400 line height to 1.8 em then click outside and let's set the margin to okay let's unlink it first then just give the top value to 10 and bottom value to 20. now let's go to rating and set the color okay the color is already fine this one will work then from quote icon let's set the color to global background color this one and let's head to client here change the color to global secondary color and now from this client designation let's set the color to global text color and from typography let's change the family to rubik then change the size to 16 pixels weight to 400 and line height to 1.5 em now go outside and from client image, let's set the image size to 56. Then go to dot and set the width to 12. 
height 212 as well border type 2 solid border width 20 all of them then from here let's select a manual background color which should be 614 C E 138 then let's scroll down and set this color to global primary color then set its width to 10 height to 10 border type to solid and border width 0 all of them then from border color let's choose global border color you know what um let's choose global white color and we're finally done with our testimonial section as well now let me close the navigator and you can also hide the panel actually let's first save our work now if we hide the panel we can see the whole website we have put together step by step and it's looking so great congratulations everyone you can also check your website from the front end so here let's first of all refresh the page and now if we go down you see everything's been put together so well and it's looking so classy and amazing thank you everyone for sticking with me till now so now since we're finally done with our home page let's head back to our dashboard and here let us create the other pages that we want in our website so from pages let's go to add new page and then let's create our about page so let's title it about then click on publish click on publish again now you know what I don't want to waste much time so let me create other pages from here as well so from here let's add new page then let's name this page as our services page so let's write services also let's publish this one publish it again then let's create our next page and name it single services page now click on publish publish it again then create our blog page so let's write blog publish this one as well and as for our last page let's name it contact then publish it now from here all the pages that we have created I want to show it I mean show these pages on our website in our menu so to do that let's head on to WordPress dashboard again and then from appearance let's go to menus let's select menu name let's just write menu then click on create menu then from here we want to show every pages that we have created in our menu right so from view all let's select all and then click on add to menu now all of these pages will be shown in our main menu now here I want to actually make these pages show in a certain order so for that let me just create an order for these pages so first one should be home and second one should be about then for third one I want to put services here and inside services I want to put single services like this so now everything else is looking perfect let's save our menu so now if we go to the front end of our website you see this is the header that we are getting from the theme and also if we go down this is also the footer that we are getting from our theme but we want our custom made and cool looking header and footer right so to do that let's go back to our wordpress dashboard and from there go to elements kit then click on header footer and then from here we want to add our custom header and footer so to do that let's click on add new and here let's set the title to header now this condition says entire site that is because header and footer are always global because in any website wherever you go you will always see the header and footer of that website so let's activate it then click on edit content and from here you see this folder icon which is add template if you click on it and then from here we are gonna import our own custom made header template so to do that now let's click on select file and then basically as you guys can remember that I said when you download the resources from jimfastdigital.com you will find these images and templates so let's go to this template folder and here you see this file named header.json let's select this one 
it's asking if the files are safe or not and of course it is safe so let's click on here and then click on continue and then click on enable and import then from here you can see it says SEOLE header so from here click on insert now you see our header is there but we still need to do some settings with this one so let's just update it and then go back to the dashboard then let's add our footer so from add new then select the type to footer and title it footer as well then activate it and click on edit content now again from here click here and then let's upload the template kit for our footer so click here and select this footer.json file now it says footer so click on insert and you see our beautiful footer is here as well and it's looking perfect now let's update it then go back to our dashboard refresh the page now if we go to the front end of our website currently you can see that we are getting the header and footer from our theme but now if we refresh the page there you go our header is already there and if we go down our footer is also here great work everyone but in our header as you can see that in our header the menu that we created is not showing so to show that let's go back to the dashboard and then from elements kit let's go to header and footer and now if we go to header edit with elementor and then if you click here you see we haven't selected the menu so let's select the menu then update it and as you can see it's already showing here so let's go back and now if we go to the front end of our website then refresh it voila there you go the menus that we have created is also showing here we have the contact the blog and services and inside it we have single services then about and our home page amazing now if we go back to our dashboard and then go to pages to all pages then if we go to edit and for this about page let's click on edit with elementor now if you have that template folder that you will get from jimfadigital.com you can also upload i mean import the about page from here as well so let's click on this folder and then click on import click on select file and from here let's select this about page.json this one so click on it now you see this about page this one so let's click on insert and as you can see our about page is already imported and it's looking great and good to go and from here you can actually customize everything on your own like from here you can click here then select the title and put your own title then from here you can change the description from here you can change the photos or the name of your agencies workers or whatever you want to put here now since it's already looking great I'm not gonna do anything else so let's just go back to our dashboard from here and then from pages let's go to all pages and for the services page let's click on edit then click on edit with Elementor and actually currently there's just too many things going on for our header and footer so our work environment is kind of looking messy and to ignore that let's click on this settings and from here page layout let's change it to elementor canvas now we can work in this clean environment peacefully so in the services section i'm gonna do some other custom things as well so for that let's bring out our navigator and then click on this plus icon choose this one take this one and for this one from additional options let's keep the overflow to hidden and also in container let's just change the content width to 1290 now from style tab actually everything is looking great here so let's go to the advanced tab and then put a top padding of 230 right to 10 bottom 200 and left to 10 now since you guys are already familiar with these settings and all of these things so I'm not going to be elaborating them much but I'll still try to explain as much as I can. So now in this container now I want to put a heading here but you don't really need to do all the heading setting again so from our home page we can just copy this one so from here let's select copy and then in here 
we can just paste it here. Now I'm just going to put some dummy texts here. And then from style tab, let's align it to center. And from title, let's go to typography and put its size to 18 pixels. I mean 80 pixels. And weight to 800. Line height to 1 EM. And then we're done here. Now let's go to the focus title from typography. Let's set the size to 80 pixels. Weight to 800. Line height to 1 EM. Okay, and we're done with the heading. So now let's take a text editor underneath it from widgets. Drag and drop it here. And let me put some dummy text here. And from here, go to style tab. Align items to center the text color to global text color. Then from advanced tab, let's make the bottom margin to minus 14. And for padding, let's change it to percentage, unlink the values, and set the right and left padding to 15%. Okay, now we're done with our heading container. Now let's take another container underneath this one. So from widgets, or actually from here, you can just click here. I mean, right click over here, then add a new container. And it will by default go under this one. Then we can name this as our service box container. Change its content weight to box. Weight to 1290, direction to row, justify content to center, then change the gaps to 30 all of them. And let's set it to wrap. Then inside this one, let's take another container, make its content width to full width, width to 31.5%. And from style tab, change the background type color to global white color. Then from border, let's change the border type to solid, border width to 1 pixels, all of them, border color to global border color, and border radius to all 16 pixels. And then from advanced tab, set all the padding to 32 pixels. Now let's take an icon inside of this one. So from widgets, search for icon, take this one, let's select an icon search for fingerprint this one then changes view to stacked and from style tab align it to left set primary color to global primary color and secondary color to global white color then size to 36 pixels and padding to 22 pixels and from advanced tab let's only set the bottom margin to minus 7 then align cells to start now let's take a heading underneath it, so from widget, let's take this heading here, then I'm going to put a dummy heading. Okay, now from here, select H4, then from style tab, select text color to global secondary color. Now let's take a text editor underneath here, again put some dummy texts here, then from style tab, set it to global secondary. Now let's put a button underneath it, so from widgets, let's take this button widget, then I want it to say learn more, then from style tab, align it to left, actually also from content, let's give an icon here, so for that, click on icon library, then search for arrow right, this one. Now I want to show my icon after this learn more button, so here just click on right. Okay, now put the icon spacing to 7 pixel. Then from style tab, let's go to button typography and set the line height to 1.1 EM. Now from background type, let's give it a manual color, write 614C E100. Also give it a global color from here, so let's select primary. Then from hover, let's select text color to global secondary color and padding to all zero. Okay, now our service box is looking perfect. Now if you want some more boxes, I mean service boxes, then you can just right click over here and then click on duplicate. Then you can also duplicate this one, then this one. And underneath here, you can also duplicate this and this. 
and then you can customize each of them the way you want because you already know how to do it, right? So I'll be back after customizing all of them. Alright, so I've customized some of them as you can see and you can do the same. So now let's just check the responsive mode of our services section. So first let's go to tablet. Here for the services parent container from advanced tab. Let's change the paddings to 170, 10, 80 and 10. Then for the heading container. Everything is looking good actually, so let's just hold to the services box container and inside this one, select this one, then from layout, make its width to percentage scale and 47.5%. And then from here you can just click here and click copy and then in this one you can just paste style. And from like this one you can do all of them. So. For this one, let's put it, then this one, then this one, and finally this one. So as you can see, I've actually done all of them. I've put the settings. I mean, I've actually just copied and pasted the settings. Now let's update our work, and then go to mobile view, and here choose the services parent container. Then from here, change the padding to 110, this one to 10, bottom to 50, and left to 10. Inside of the heading container, select jacket heading. And then from title, select typography and change the line height to 1.2 em. And then for focus title, choose typography and set its line height to 1.2 em as well. Okay, now select text editor. Then make the bottom margin to 10. And for padding, let's make right and left padding to 10. Now let's minimize this one and head to service box container. Select this one. And from advanced tab, let's unlink the values. And set top and bottom to 32. Then right and left to 20. Okay, now go inside here and choose icon. And from style tab, give it size to 26 pixels. Alright, now you can just click copy from here and then paste the style to all of these ones. And this one. And this one. And lastly this one. Alright, now update our work. And we're finally done with our services section. Now underneath here, I also want to put some more things, but we don't have to create those things because we already have some ready-made template kits for these ones. So from here, then from import, let's select a file and then select this case study section, this one. Now from here, click on insert. All right, now our services section has been uploaded perfectly and it's looking great. But as I've said before that from this template kit, you can also customize all of these things like this heading, these images, these buttons and all of these things. Now let us scroll up a bit and our services page is looking perfect. But as you can see that our page name is colliding with our header. So to prevent that from happening, what you guys can always do is from this settings, choose this page layout option and select elementor full width, then update. Now always remember to do this for all of the pages because otherwise in the front end of your website, your header and the page name will collide just like you saw before. So always remember to change your page layout to elementor full width. Let us also check the responsive mode of our services page. So from here, we can go to the tab view and everything is looking just perfect. Also from the mobile view, if we scroll up, yes, it's looking amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's this case studies section, which is also looking perfect. So now let's go to the desktop mode, close the responsive. And now I want to show you guys something interesting. So let's go to the pages from our dashboard. And inside all pages, do you guys remember the single services that we created? 
and we also set it as the sub page of our services page right so from services page let's say if we scroll up you guys see these service boxes so let's say i want this interactive button to redirect our site viewers to a single service page for instance if they click on this learn more button it will redirect them to another page within our service page which will show them the services regarding the keyword research right and that is why we created the single services page here so let's say i wanna rename this page as keyword research right so let's click on edit then let's rename it as keyword research now let's click on update so now if we go to our services page and let's say when we click on this button it will take our website visitors to that keyword research services page i mean single services page so we have to put the link to that website right i mean that single services page so from here if we now write keyword see we can automatically get the keyword research page that we just created i mean renamed we renamed the single services page to keyword research and then updated it right now from here if we just select this one then whoever clicks on this button it will take them to our single services page which is this page so now let's update it and then let's just go to our single services page i mean our keyword research page and then click on edit with elementor now let's say i want this keyword research page as a single services page so here you can just upload the template that you got from jimfadigital.com so just click here then from import click on select files and then select this single service page dot json file so let's select it now you see this template just click on insert so you see our single services page has been also uploaded i mean imported successfully within a second and it's looking amazing so from here you can also customize these images these buttons now let's say here our heading says strategic mail marketing mastery but we want to write something which is more relatable to our seo agency so let's bring out our navigator then let's click on this heading and let's say i'm gonna change the before focus title to paid search then focus title to management and then finally let's change the after focus title to marketing then let's update it then now if we close the control panel you see how beautiful our single services page is looking like let's scroll down and you can also change these counter numbers these images these headings and these subsections as well and here we have our faq section and then our footer so just like that you can change all of this you can also check the responsiveness of our single service page so let's just click on this one then let's go to the tab view and it's looking perfect as well now let's go to the mobile view and this is looking perfect too there's our footer so now let's just close this responsive mode now let's say I want to see if our single service page or our service box within this service page I mean this one is working correctly I want to see it so first of all from this page let's update the template that we have uploaded then if we go back to our dashboard and now let's go to the front end of our website so right click over this one and open in new tab now let's head here you see from under services we get this keyword research single service and then click here you see it's redirecting us to this single service page and just like this you can create other single service pages and then you can link them here within this button and it will redirect our site visitors to that single service page of which page we put the link in here so you see it's really simple now just to make it even more clear i'm going to create another single service page so that you can do it a second time along with me so first let's go to pages then create add new page and from here let's name this seo audit then click on publish and then publish again now click on edit with elementor then let's again import our single service kit i mean template select file 
select this one then click on insert and another single service page is ready so let's update it then let's go to our dashboard and from appearance to menus let's see if we have this page here okay we have to select it from here then add to menu and now let's take this inside of our services section i mean our services page and then let's save the menu now if we go to the front end of our website currently as you can see that under the services section it has not been registered yet so we have to refresh the page and now let's take a look at it and there it is and now to get access to this single service page from our services pages this button let's click over here and then let's write seo audit seo and there it is so let's just select it then click on update then again if we head to the front end and go to our services page and click on this button you see it's taking us to this SEO audit single service page and just like that you can add any other single service page from here and you can access it from another service pages interactive box or button from here cool alright so now that we're finally almost done with all of our major pages now I want to show you how to work with all the blog related stuffs like how to write a blog post how to customize a blog post how to customize the single blog post page and all of these things so let's just close this one and then close this one as well and now from here the first thing I want to show you is how to create a blog post so from the left control panel if we hover on posts and then choose all posts and this is where you can create your blog posts so first let's just close this notification and to create a new blog post you need to click on this add a new post so afterwards you can put a title of your blog post here so i'm just gonna write this is a blog post then after putting the title of your blog post from here if you go to featured images you can set a image for your blog post so let's just click here then you can choose any image or thumbnail for your first blog post so here i'm just gonna choose this one then click on set featured image and now our blog post I mean this blog post will have this image as its thumbnail then from categories you can set your blog post to any category as you like so from here if you click on add new category then you can just put a category name here let's say I'm gonna write marketing so after putting down your category name you can just click on add new category and your blog post will be within this category so from this category option you can set all kinds of categories to your blog posts then let's close this one and then from tags you can set any tags for your blog post and if we scroll down and then open discussion you see if you check allow comments and allow pingbacks and trackbacks that would mean that you are opening your blog posts for discussions so your website visitors will also be able to interact with your blog post now i'm pretty much done with my blog post so let's just select publish from here click on publish again now our first blog post is already published now if we click on edit with elementor okay so the header and our blog post title is is colliding with each other so from the settings option let's change our page layout to elementor full width and now only our header will be shown not the title of our blog page or blog post now you guys may remember that you got a template kit from jimfadigital.com so let's click on this add new template then click on import and let's click on select file then click on single blog dot json this file and now let's just click on insert now as you can see our already made template kit for our first blog post has been imported successfully and it's looking great so from here you can change the blog post title if you want you can also change the other texts in the blog post these dummy texts are given but you can change them to your liking as you wish now if we scroll down we can also see the category that we set and the picture that we choose is now showing as the thumbnail of our blog post so just in this way you can create all other blog posts as you wish so let me just update this one now if we head outside you see that our blog post has been published successfully so just like this you can create other blog posts as you like now I'm going to create some more blog posts here 
So as you guys can see that I'm done creating some other dummy blog posts but since we've created our blog posts now we want our blog posts to be shown in our blog page right and to do that let's go to pages and then all pages from here go to the blog page and click on edit with elementor and now all we gotta do is click on this add template then import a template select files and then select this blog page.json file so from here let's insert this one and as you can see that in our blog page all the blog posts that we have created is successfully shown this is the blog post that we created together and then afterwards I created these dummy blog posts by myself but you get the gist right so just in this way you can first create any blog post from the posts option and afterwards if you add the already made template kit in your blog page then all the blog posts that you have created will be shown here so now let's click on update you can also check the responsiveness if you want so let's go to the tablet mode and as you can see everything is already looking great and from the mobile view this is looking great as well so we are finally done with our blog page now let's go outside so finally we are going to create our last page which is our contact page so click on edit with elementor and for our contact page we also have an already made template kit so from here just click on add template then import a template click on select files and then select this contact page.json file then click on insert and as you can see our contact page is successfully created within a second but there's just one last thing we need to do so let's say that in your contact page you want an interactive contact box where people will be able to contact you right so for that reason in the template kit you will already find this empty box which is actually a metform widget and in this container you will find this metform widget so click here then click on edit form and let's just click edit form then let's just take a container from here take the direction to column then just set the width to 1290 and from advanced tab let's set the padding values to zero all of them now within this container let's take this text widget and then put the level to full name then set the placeholder as your name then from the style tab let's choose the color to global text color and typography to global text then from margin let's just put the bottom value to 12 and leave the rest as 0 then choose input unlink the padding values then top value to 11 right to 15 bottom to 11 and left to 15 then from normal select the input color to black which is here by default then from background type let's click on this color picker and slide this wheel to the beginning then click out and scroll down set the border type to solid and border width to 1 pixels all of them and from border color let's give it a custom code of c9 cc e2 okay now from hover let's select the border type to solid and border width to 1 pixels all of them and border color to global primary color then from focus tab set border type to solid and border width to 1 pixels all of them then border color to global primary color now from typography choose global text color and set border radius to 12 pixels then scroll down and choose placeholder set typography to global text and color to let's set a custom code which is 717383 okay now click outside then go to the advanced tab unlink the margin values and only give the bottom value to 5 now let's update it now if we go to the widget option we're gonna put some other metform widgets here but I think you guys already understood what I'm doing here so I'm creating these interactive form boxes so that whenever anyone wants to contact us they can write their name or email or anything like that in here and we will get notified about them so now let's take an email widget and now all you need to do is from this pencil icon right click over it then click on copy and then if you choose this email one okay let me move the navigator a little and from here right click over this pencil icon and then click on paste style and this form box is also good to go then let's just do a little sitting so click on this email widget and set the level to email address and placeholder to your email then scroll down and from settings 
turn on this required option. So now putting an email address is a compulsory thing to do. And we're done with the email form box as well. Now let's go to widgets and search for text area. So let's take this one. And just like before, we have already copied the settings from here. So let's just paste it here. I mean paste style. And there you go. Now let's just change the label to message and placeholder to right here. Then from the style tab, select input and from here, let's set the height to 225 and we're done. Now lastly, from widgets option, let's take this submit button widget underneath here and from here, set the label to send message. Then button alignment to justified and choose icon. Let's search for location arrow, this one. And set the icon position to after then from style tab set all the padding to 16 pixels and from typography set it to global accent then from here change the background type to global primary and then from hover tab change the background type to global secondary now scroll down and select border and set all the border radius to 12 pixels then from icon, let's set the font size to 24 pixels, unlink the padding values and only give the left padding to 10 and set the vertical align to 3 pixels. Alright, now we're finally done. So let's just update our work. And as you can see, this section is looking great. So let's just update and close it. And there you go. Now our contact page is finally completely done. So let's just update our work. And now if we go to the front end of our website and let's say a visitor has came to your contact page and they're trying to contact you. So they will just have to fill their name. Let's say their name is Abe Adams and their email is adams123 at the rate of gmail.com and then they're messaging us, I mean they're asking us to do a search optimization for their website. Now after completing these fields, if they click on send message, as you can see that it's saying that their form has been submitted successfully. Now if we go to the back end of our website and then go back to our dashboard, from here if we go to Metform and then click on entries, you see the entry that we just did has been submitted here. So from here if we just click on view, you see this is the entry that we made. So from now on. If anyone tries to contact you through that form, then their entries will be shown here. And just like that, people will be able to contact you through the contact page of your website. Alright, now since we're done with our entire website, I want to show you something interesting. Now if you go to any page of our website, I mean the back end of our website, you see we have our site logo from our header. I mean the header that we got from importing the template kit, right? So in our header, this website logo was already input. I mean, it was already given in our header. But let's say if you want to customize your own logo for your website, you can do that as well. So now I'm going to show you how you can make your site logo from scratch and make a custom designed logo of your own. And I will also be using a completely free tool and the easiest way to do it. And after creating the logo, I will also be showing you how you can create a fab icon for your website. Now, if you don't know what a fab icon is, well, fab icon is the image which is shown with your site title on the browser tab like this one. Now, currently our website has no fab icon. So this is showing this default fab icon for our website. Now, if we go to jimfabdigital.com, you can see that jimfabdigital.com also has a fab icon of their own. And just like this, usually every website has a fab icon of their own. So now we also want a fab icon for our website, right? Because every professional website uses a fab icon. So now let's just go and make our logo first. So to make a logo on your own for free, come to this logomaker.com and from their homepage, you can just click on start my design. Then choose black canvas. Then from here, just click on this text widget and you can type whatever you want as your website logo. So I'm just going to write Seoli. Then from here, select bold. 
and you can also choose all types of fonts like you want like you can choose this one or you can change any other font from here so for now I'm just going to choose this sign font and from here you can pick any color you want I'm just going to give it a custom color code of 1F1F25 1 1F so just in this way you can use all these widgets and options and these colors and fonts and other stuffs to make your own logo from logomaker.com completely for free then from here you can just click on this save here then from here it says download low resolution PNG file and since this is a free logo maker website so we're just going to download a low resolution PNG file from here and then you can just put your email address here so I'm going to put mine and then after accepting the terms if you click on send file to email then as you can see your created logo will be sent to your email and just like this you can make any kind of logo for your website super easily and also for free now if we check our email you can see that our free logo has been sent to us then you can just click on this download free file and there you go your logo is all yours to use now you might be wondering how you're going to put your logo in your header right so for that just simply go to the dashboard of your website and then from elements kit click on header footer now if you click on this header and click with edit with elementor you see currently we have this logo here now if you just click here and from this choose image option you can put any logo that you create or which you have customly made it's as simple as that and now as for our fab icon let's just go to the wordpress dashboard then from appearance go to customize and here if you go and click on site identity you see this select site icon option if you click on this from here you can choose any image as your fab icon now since i already have a pre-made fab icon so i'm just going to use that one but you can also customize your own fab icon from same logomaker.com and then upload it here and then if you select it you can also put any other fab icon as well so for now i'm just going to select this pre-made fab icon then click on select okay as you can see it's perfectly cropped so let's just click on crop image and there you go you see up until now we had this default fab icon for our website but currently we have a custom fab icon for our website only now let's just click on publish and then close all of these tabs now if we go back to our dashboard then go to our site you see there it is our fab icon now finally since we're all done with our complete website i mean our entire website now let's head into the back end of our home page so click here and here you might remember our banner section so to make our home page look even more cooler what we need to do is first select the parent banner container so in our parent banner container what we need to do is go to the widgets then let's just drag this image widget inside of here now I want this image within my parent banner container so I'm just going to drag it over here now let's upload an image from here now let's select this one then from style tab let's set its width to 57 pixel and from advanced tab let's set its position to absolute then horizontal offset value to minus 20 pixels and from vertical orientation let's set its offset value to 460 pixels then from here let's just click right click over it and click on duplicate and now for the second image let's go to the style tab again then set its width to 85 pixels and from advanced tab set its horizontal orientation to right then offset value to minus 40 pixels then vertical orientation to top and offset to 155 pixels now if we move the navigator you see the second image is here then in the same way let's just go to the child one container and just like before go to widgets then drag this image widget here now I want this image widget within my child one container so let's just drag it inside of here now let's choose an image let's select this green one then from style tab set its width to 40 pixels and from advanced tab set the position to absolute and offset value to 42 percent 
and then vertical orientation offset value to minus 30 pixels. Now again, let's just duplicate this one. And then for the second image, let's do its styling from the style tab. Set its width to 23 pixels. Then from advanced tab, position to absolute. And set this offset value to 45%. And set its vertical orientation to bottom. Then set its offset value to 75%. Then let's update our progress. Now we've put our gradient bubbles here, but to make it even more prettier and look more beautiful, let's go to gymfadigital.com. And from here, as you can see this animation CSS code snippet. Now let's copy this whole animation CSS code snippet from here. So let's just start from here. Then scroll down and let's just stop here. Then right click over it, click on copy, then go to the back end of our home page. Now as you guys may remember our HTML container. So let's just click here. Now after this bracket you just need to click here and then let's just make some space here. Let's just click on enter. Then let's put our code snippet here. So right click over it and then click on paste. So now our animation code snippet have been copied and pasted in our HTML code, okay? So now let's close this and go to our parent banner container. Now what you need to do is, let's just select this image. Then from the advanced tab, if you scroll down, you see this CSS classes. All you need to do is, go to gymfadigital.com, then copy this animation one. So let's just copy this. Then go back, then put the class name here. So let's just paste it. Wow! As you can see that our image has been animated and it's looking great. Now in the same way, let's put more animation to make it look even more cooler. So let's head back to gymfadigital.com. Then let's copy this animation to class name. And then go back, let's select this one. Then from advanced tab, if we scroll down, then put the class name here. Wow! Now let's keep on doing this for these bubbles as well, so that they would be animated as well. Let's first choose this one, then go to gymfadigital.com and copy this one, just like before. Then go back, scroll down and put the class name here. Wow. Okay, now let's continue with the next one. So let's select this one. Go here. Copy this. And go back. Then put the class name here. Let's do the same for this one. Go back here. And copy this animation. Now go here. And from advanced tab, just put the class name here. And just like that, we're all done. Now let me just close the navigator to give you a better look. And close the control panel as well. Wow, it's looking so awesome. Um, but we also need to do some responsive settings, so let's just open this one. Then go to the responsive mode. Let's check the tab view first. Okay, everything is looking great here. I don't think we need to change anything. So let's just go to the mobile view. Now here we need to do some settings. So let's just select this bubble here. Oh sorry, let me bring out our friend navigator first. Now from here, let's choose this first image, this one. Now let's go to the style tab and from width, change it to 40 pixels. Then let's select the second image. Then from style tab, let's set its width to 50 pixels. But now for this green bubble, it's actually colliding with our header. So let's just select this from here. Then go to the responsive section. I mean this one and then hide on mobile portrait all right now everything is looking great so let's just update it actually we also need to hide this one so let's just select it from here then from responsive 
let's hide it on the mobile portrait. Okay, now finally everything here looks great, so let's just update our work. Well, actually, I forgot to give some space between our header and our heading container. So let's just click on this child1 container. Sorry, I mean this parent banner container. And from advanced tab, let's set the padding value to 80 pixel. Okay, now it's finally looking complete and perfect. So let's update it. Alright, so now let's just close this one. Now we're finally at the front end of our home page and it's looking great. As you can see that you can enjoy the animation that we put ourselves. So everything is looking perfect here. Now let's just scroll down and here's our logos, our services section and then our about section. And then if we scroll down we have our counters, testimonials and everything. So now let's just go to the top because everything is looking perfect here. So now let's go to the about section. And everything is looking perfect here as well. If we click here, we can see the video. Then we can see our team members and below here is our footer. Now let's go to the services section. So let's just go to the services section and here are our service boxes that we created. And if we go down, we also have this section and everything is looking just perfect. Then if we again scroll up and from here we can actually open the keyword research in another tab and then for SEO audit page, I mean this page, we can just click here and there you go. Here is our single services page and here is our other single services page. Now let's go to our contacts page and here we have the contact form box and if we go down, we have our FAQ section and everything is looking just perfect. Now then if we go to blog page, there you go. These are the blogs that we put together. This was our first blog. And if we go down, there is our footer. So now as you can see, our website is completely finished and it's looking great. We can also enter any of these blogs. So here as you can see, our single blog posts are looking great as well. So now let's head back to our home. So we've completed our amazing SEO agency website design. Now go ahead and create your own professional SEO agency website. I wish you all the very best. I have just one request though. Please comment down below about the learning experience from this whole video. Also, please share this video on social medias. It would mean the world to me. I'll see you again in the next video. But until then, this was Abir signing off. Goodbye.